Today, we're so happy to be joined by our beautiful musical performing artist, Sister Nkule Dube. How are you hey. today, Sister? I'm okay. How are you, my queen? <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm doing very well. I probably should call you doctor because I know we're a couple of generations. <laughs> yeah. Recovery, yeah. Yes, my wife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're still on the same team, and that's what's important. Mm -hmm. We really thank you for joining us today as we commemorate an African Women's Day. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, it, when we first um, were introduced to you, we um, found out that Pan-African Women's Day, you have a strong, strong feeling about it. So I wondered if you could just elaborate on that a bit for us. Um, yeah, I, I, I do. I got to be invited as one of the ambassadors um, in, uh, in Malawi. We went to Malawi at one point, which is one of the projects that were part of the Pan-African um, Women's Day um, celebration. So um, it was in 2015, I think. Yeah. So being part of that and actually um, not just uh, making the change in music or in, in your decision as an artist or someone who's um, on the platform, who has the platform, um, actually being there physically for me kind of switched the way I look at things. Yeah. So it was such an honor. Do you know of any efforts that have been made to organize um, African women, musicians and artists, either um, on the continent in Azania, South Africa or internationally? Um, yes, there are a few. Um, usually under music, it's uh, festivals, but we would like to have more uh, women uh, festivals like, you know, Pan-African Women's Day Festival or, you know, just have uh, more female, uh, bringing females together in a situation like that. I think it would be more celebrated for young women to see only the whole show, it's females. I mean, that's like, that's like a unicorn, really. It doesn't happen. Like, it's so unfair, but it doesn't. It's not a reality. Like, they, the, I don't know, the industry will feel like maybe we're not bringing as many as many people um, on shows. I don't know. But I feel like we have enough uh, uh, followers. We have enough, if you may, you know, people who love uh, music differently. So, and another way to, to help um, each other get on and push this movement forward is to allow women to be in your space. Allow other women to be curious about your, your your center and who you are, and not take it as 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 a as a as a an opponent. Don't take her as an opponent. Don't um, you want to take her down type of thing? The only way we grow is if we all merge like this and become one. Have you been able to tour and perform around Africa? And if so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, I have. Uh, we've been to Namibia, um, Kenya, uh, Senegal, Gambia. Uh, we're going to Zambia this year um, in October 21st. Come through. Um, and then we did what? Oh, Zimbabwe. Yeah, we, I, I do like to go a lot in, in Africa, um, but I don't get as much as I do um, in Europe or America type of shows. Um, maybe in a year, maybe go once in Africa somewhere. Even in my own country, I don't perform as much. So wow. I would like uh, to, be, to do more um, shows in Africa because I get to be on the ground and get to be actually walk there instead of just, you know, when we're going out, we just go out and shop and, you know, see the Eiffel Towers and, oh my God, you know. But um, performing in Africa, it has a different view to it. You get to meet the people. You get to touch the people. You get to eat those, you know, different type of food, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I would like to be, to, 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 to do more in Africa. I'd like to do more, yes. Uh, ten years ago, darker peoples everywhere and their friends was rejoicing because of the liberation of Africa. The United Nations declared 1960 the year of Africa because so many independent African states joined that body that year. And joyous independent celebrations were held throughout Africa. Then in May, 1963 at Addis Ababa in Ethiopia came the first great African summit conference. I was there. It was a magnificent pageantry of color 
and eloquence and passionate speeches. I, we hailed the organization of the, of the African unity. The charter of African unity was signed there. And we wrote about it, how wonderful it was. I was one of the many people who wrote about how wonderful this was. Okay, okay. It's not I so know now that much that, that happened at that sum, sum conference was really very foolish and very naive. Why do I say that? For how sensible was it to stand up and proclaim our intentions to the world of imperialists, colonialists, neo-colonialists, plunderers and thieves when we did not have the power to rebuild Africa in our modern world. We boasted at that conference of an independent, united Africa, a strong, bountiful Africa. We told of the marvelous resources of this continent, of how we were going to take them and use them for the development of our own people, how we were going to be able to invite the children of Africa, wherever they were, to come back and share in the riches of this very, very rich continent, beautiful continent. We got up there and told all of our plans. And before the ink on that charter was dry, the enemies of Africa had united to bring us down. And in a short time, wave after wave of coup d'etats swept across the continent, and country after country fell under the man's hammer. Imperialists, neo-colonialists, call them what you will, whether they come from west or east or north or south, they are the same greedy exploiters. Had my generation learned so much that we thought we would liberate Africa by cooperating with the age-old exploiters of that, of, of, of that continent, they who had grown fat and sleek and prosperous had no, never will have, and, and, uh, 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 and, and have not now any intention of retreating into their predominantly cold, gray fastness of their northwestern zones. They love our African sunshine. <laughs> our beautiful broad rivers, our bright gold, our sparkling diamonds, our copper, magnesia, bauxite, and oil. They do not love Africans or the children of Africa, wherever they are. When you hear that Jamaica, independent Jamaica, has a black prime minister, you say, well, those people are in power. That's black power. But that's baloney. That is hogwash. That's a damn lie. But Jamaica wasn't ready to elect a black leader. Warmest revolutionary greetings, mighty daughters and sons of Africa. On behalf of the All African Peoples Revolutionary Party, I, Sister Tandiwe Shimirenga, invite you to Pan-African Women's Day 2021. Viva Pan-African Women's Day, viva. So, viva. We are so excited to welcome to you this to this historic or historic commemoration of Pan African Women's Day. The theme for this year is African women and youth organizing for Pan Africanism 
in the 21st century. And I am very proud and privileged to be one of two MCs for this event today. My name is Sister Tandiwe Shimarenga, and we have at a later time uh, our beloved sister Lotu, who will be joining us to co MC. We have an exciting program for you today, brothers and sisters. We have edutainment. We have a keynote speaker, Sister Deborah Sores de Gama, who is uh, a leading organizer from the PIGC, which is the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde. She's also a member of the All African People's Revolutionary Party. We have an exciting panel of amazing sisters from different parts of the Pan-African world who will be speaking to the theme. We have edutainment again, and we have solidarity statement from the National Union of Eritrean Women. And of course, you will have an opportunity to ask questions about Pan-African Women's Day, about the theme, about the AAPRP, about the organizations that are represented in this program. But most importantly, mighty daughters and sons of Africa, you must ask yourselves, what are you doing for the liberation of African people? If you love your people, you must join an organization that is fighting for the liberation of Mother Africa. You must join an organization that is fighting for the liberation of our beautiful African people. As our great ancestor Shirley Graham said, the neocolonialists and the imperialists continue their plunder of our homeland, Africa. She made those comments. Shirley Gray Dubois at the University of California, Los Angeles on November 13th, 1970, 51 years ago. And those enemies of African people are still among us. And we have a responsibility to organize for the liberation of African people. So brothers and sisters, I want to tell you a little bit about um, the history of the AAPRP. The All African People's Revolutionary Party is a permanent mass Pan-African party. Its base is in our homeland, Africa. It was founded in 1968 by great son of Africa, Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah. He called for the formation of the AAPRP in a powerful book called The Handbook of Revolutionary Warfare in order to coordinate the action of our people towards the liberation of our homeland, Africa. You might be asking, what does this word Pan-Africanism mean? Well, Pan-Africanism is an objective. It is an objective that our people are organizing to achieve. And the correct definition of Pan-Africanism is the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. Scientific socialism is a collective economic system in which all of the people own the resources of our homeland Africa instead of what we have today under capitalism, where just a tiny minority of greedy people own the riches of Africa. And I'm sure you know that Africa is the richest continent on the earth. And when Africa is liberated, no more suffering among our people, no more poverty, because we will have the economic and political power to take care of our people all over the world. Isn't that exciting, brothers and sisters? A unified socialist Africa is an objective that we in the All African People's Revolutionary Party, the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania, the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde, 
are organizing to achieve. So you have to ask yourselves, what are you going to do for the struggle uh, to help speed up the liberation of our people? So my brothers and sisters, um, we welcome you to Pan-African Women's Day. And we hope that by the end of this commemoration, that if you're not in an organization for fighting for the liberation of our people, that you will join an organization. We are so privileged to have outstanding cultural edutainment. We know, as Ahmed Sekoture says, that revolution is an act of culture. And culture is a means to transform the lives of our people through music, through political education, through ideology and other means, we can and we are transforming the consciousness of our people through revolutionary African culture. So we are privileged to welcome our beautiful, powerful Pan-African sister, Sister Abina Disro. And I will read her bio. She's done a lot of great things. Sister Abina Disro has been called a poet for the people. She is a spiritual healer poet. And finally, being given the title High Priestess of Poetry by the Washington DC community. She is the embodiment and definition of community empowerment, organizational leadership, creativity, and compassion. While using her art and poetry as therapy for cancer patients at Howard University, Sister Abina has become a treasured and accomplished cultural ambassador, organizer, and spiritual leader with the gift of being able to bring diverse people together to work and collaborate successfully. Please help me in giving our beloved sister, Abina Ditto, a warm revolutionary Pan-African Women's Day greeting. Sister Abina, welcome. Thank you very much. Peace and blessings. And I'll get right to my cultural presentation. Societal ills. The indigenous side of this place has been erased. So many have died, the elders' wisdom no longer guides this society. A monster grows, feeding off of instant gratification, ignoring the need, always hungry for the want. The appetite grows like Pinocchio's nose, manipulating its way with lies. This monster grows stronger and stronger every day, destroying and consuming everything in its path, you do the math. Our society is mentally and physically dying, time out for trying. Where are the chosen few that will stand up and do the do, accepting the responsibility for what needs to be done to evoke, awaken, and change? It's a brain game that is driving many insane. Right is now wrong and wrong is now right and the truth is nowhere in sight. So I exercise my might, keeping my overstanding tight. To survive the night, I must make it to the morning light. So many shifting around me. I step myself so the negative cannot find me. But there is one who sees me and his eyes burn red and he glides from place to place like he's connected to a thread. This X-ray sighted entity followed me and cornered me and engaged me in a brief fight. I see what I was made of, just to see what I was made of. In the melee, he cut me and I bled and in the sight of it all, he fled. Why? I do not understand until I became silent. 
for my blood began to cry out. It was ancestral voices I was hearing, echoing in my head, influencing my thoughts, spirituality navigating me to a place not yet known, traveling a path after a mental war aftermath, physically afflicted, spiritually disincombobligated. My spirit is overlaid. My mind conceives, mouth gives birth to the truth that is 777 proof. I seek to a higher place. So I take to a mountaintop where I can gaze at what is going on in society. A clear look in a place where my voice carries the loudest at the sight at what I see, it moves me deeply creating high emotions, manifesting tears of blood. My eyes create a flood that drips from my face onto my white clothes. So like the ugly in the world, I need to see more. My wings are dry, so I fly high. And once again, it's on. You can now, you can live now that I came. Witness what may be strange. Your thoughts I rearranged, fully quoted by King James, revealed by the time, surprise you like Columbine, infinite wisdom with a storm intertwined, with step I exist, with strength I persist, with all your might you try to resist. Now the masses got clashes, man is doomed to dust and ashes, but I have came to bring the classes into realms you cannot imagine. Picture a perfect world where gods are boys and girls growing up in unison, treating life like a pearl, birthing love to change things. I love to bring things. My life is an attempt to destroy and build things. 911, they scream, yet there is no more to be seen to escape to New York to unravel and expose things. Brought you closer to witness that we failed. 911 is global scale. That which you used to see on TV is now your own personal hell. Now I'm here to redeem you. You should have seen you standing there in the darkness waiting for me to freaking bring you into infinite light where days are the same as night. My very presence is the wind as your mind is a kite. Take flight and go global, then collect it like a rocket. The wrath of Alcatraz couldn't gravitate or stop it. Go on and venture more. I am power, Lord. Remember me? I am the essence you felt when you were released from the cords. Resurrected intellect. I connect like internet, born to perform, demolish, and wreck. Within the body of a woman, I am a breathing time bomb. Witness the download of my soul at freeyourmind.com. Here to reveal the precondition, my one and only mission. Ever since I was commissioned, I've been freeing the minds of the imprisoned. You've been living in the inert. The meek shall inherit the earth and reign supreme from the birth of their work. Struggles, struggles and tribulations will overthrow rogue nations, cessations of human relations, actions packed by educations will pose sophistications to any and all abrogations, a total rebirth of the youth. Use the force Luke as young minds be inclined to troubleshoot reason, invent, formulate, create, and make design a clear vision of time when all thoughts are divine. Reconnecting with a past that is distant, revolving and evolving into the infinite, I proclaim a covenant to the new world order of government. I strike, I strike poses like brother Moses parting the seas through up Moses my choices be the boldest my wisdom is of the oldest in the zoom of the zone of the clones I roam bringing the kingdom to come home something some tend to think that it's gone but once again it's on and there are transformations taking time to shape your mind of all life vibrations behold the coming of your ancestors look at them deciding who will walk with you on this particular journey i hear them beckoning in the spirits of shango oshun abatala ogun yemaya earthly done tour earthly freighter calling all the way from haiti 
Come, come. Our daughter has called you. Come and strengthen her on how to walk this journey destined for greatness. We hear the hurts, the disappointments, the betrayal, the deaths, the births, the rapes. How did she survive? How did she become stronger than ever to listen to the winds, the fires, the thunder, the lightning? How did she survive? How did she become stronger? She became stronger standing with women on the power base who understand the wisdom of real authentic power. Pay attention to the signs, not the titles. Pay attention to the signs, not the titles. Pay attention to the signs, not the titles. Thank you, Ashe. Now, brothers and sisters, wasn't that powerful? Wasn't that uplifting? The message from our sister, the high priestess of poetry was electrifying. Let's give her warm revolutionary applause. Thank you, Sister Abinadisro. That was outstanding. That was poetry in motion to uplift and empower the African people. Thank you, Sister Abina Disro. Now, Sister Abina Disro is an example of the power, the creativity, and the genius of African women. And I just want to share a little bit of history of Pan African Women's Day before I introduce our keynote speaker. Pan-African Women's Day was founded on the 31st of July, 1968 in Dar es Salaam, Tanganyika, which is now called Tanzania. Following the recommendations of the All African Women's Conference that took place in July, 1961 in Conakry in Guinea, which is called the People's Revolutionary Republic of Guinea. Prior to this conference, it was resolved to organize African women's conferences in many different areas and meet in Dar es Salaam. The following year, in July 1962, to create a Pan-African Women's Organization. The Pan-African Women's Organization is the first continental women's organization, as I said, created on the 31st of July, 1962 in Dar es Salaam. It was inaugurated one year before the organization of the African Unity, the OAU, by the heads of state and government of independent African countries, former leaders of African liberation movements of that period and great African women leaders within our continent. The participants came from 14 liberation movements, including the African Party of the Independence of Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde. Now our keynote speaker is a leading organizer of the African Party of the independence of Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde, the PIGC. The participants also came from the Democratic Party of Guinea and the Convention People's Party of Ghana. So at the Power Congress in 1970, it is institutionalized that the 31st of July is Pan-African Women's Day. They also decided at that particular Congress to include the president, the position of president with comrade Asetu Koyete, who was elected president until the most recent Congress in 2019. So viva Pan-African Women's Day, viva. This is actually the...
the 59th commemoration of Pan-African Women's Day. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker, Sister Deborah Sores de Gama. It is an honor for us to have our sister who will be delivering the keynote address. Uh, our sister lives in West Africa, in Guinea-Bissau, which many call the land of Amil Cabral, one of Africa's greatest revolutionary leaders. Sister Deborah Soares de Gama is an, a cadre for the All African People's Revolutionary Party. She's a militant of the Amilcar Cabral African Youth, otherwise called JAC, J-A-A-C, that's the African, the acronym, serving on its secretariat for Zone 4 of Bissau. And she's also a pre-cadre of the PAIGC, which is the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde, the Af Amilcar Cabral Political Ideological Training School. Now, I had the privilege, together with one of our great ancestors, Mama Mowina Kuyati and Mama um, uh, Nehanda Green, as representatives of the All African Women's Revolutionary Union to attend uh, a historic meeting in Guinea-Bissau to commemorate the 20th anniversary of our women's wing, the AAWRU. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Sister Deborah Sores de Gama, who is our keynote speaker for Pan-African Women's Day today. Viva PHIGC, viva. o dia de, das mulheres pan-africanas. 31 de julho de 1962, Dar Salam, seguido de recomendações da Conferência de Todas as Mulheres Africanas, Conferência de la Femme Africaine, que ocorreu em julho de 1961, em Conakry, República Popular Revolucionária de Guiné. Antes desta conferência, foi decidida organizar a Conferência de Mulheres Africanas em Kadar. Movimentos de Libertação e Países Independentes Africanos. E reunir-se em Dar Salam, Tanganyika, no ano seguinte, em julho de 1962, para criar a Organização Panafricanista das Mulheres. O nosso processo ocorreu para jovens e trabalhadores. Ou seja, cada área realizou conferências nacionais para criar sindicatos nacionais de trabalhadores e organizações nacionais juvenis, de jovens africanos, seguidas pela Organização da Juventude Panafricanista Continental Africana e pela União dos Trabalhadores Panafricanos. O plano era que depois da Conferência Continental Africana de Jovens, de Trabalhadores e Mulheres, eles formassem uma organização panafricanista de massas ao nível continental. Para coordenar nessa luta para alcançar uma África totalmente libertária e unificada com o socialismo. A Organização Pan-Africana de Mulheres, a primeira organização continental de mulheres, foi criada em 31 de julho de 1962 em Dar Salaam, Tanganyika, posteriormente República Unida de Tanzânia com Zambizar. Foi inaugurado um ano antes da Organização da Unidade Africana. Os participantes vieram em dez movimentos de libertação, incluindo o Partido Africano da Independência e Guiné Cabo Verde, o Partido Democrático da Guiné da Revolução Democrática Africana, RDG, RDA, a Convention, Convention People's Party, Partido da Convenção do Povo CCP, FNL Argélia e, e entre outros, e 14 países africanos independentes, incluindo a Guiné e Ghana, Mali, Egito, Argélia, Tanzânia e entre outros. A primeira secretária-geral da Organização Pan-Africana de Mulheres 
foi a nossa irmã e camarada imortal, Ian Martins e Seda Guiné. Ela permaneceu até ser nomeada para o Conselho da Segurança das Nações Unidas, para servir como a primeira mulher no mundo e, posteriormente, a primeira mulher presidente do Conselho de Segurança das Nações Unidas. No Congresso de, dos Partidos do Pouco, no Congresso da Organização Africana das Mulheres, em 1970, o 31 de julho foi institucionalizada, institucionalizada como o Dia da Mulher Panafricanista. Decide também incluir o cargo de presidente, sendo o camarada Aissa Tukote, eleito presidente, reconduziu várias vezes até o último congresso de, 19, de 2019. A primeira sede foi em Bamako, Mali, de 1962, até o golpe de Estado contra Modibo Keita e o governo de PDMRDA em 1967. Em seguida, foi transferido para Argélia, 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 seguido de Luanda em Angola, depois de Petró, Pretória, África do Sul e agora de Zabeba, Etiópia. Quando a Organização Pan-Africana de Mulheres estava sediada em, na Argélia, a camarada irmã Francisca Preira, do PGC, serviu como representante residente de 1967 até 1971. Ela estava presente, ela está presente aqui conosco hoje. Após a nossa breve apresentação, gostaríamos de dar o microfone a ela para pronunciar uma declaração sobre o significado de hoje, o Dia das Mulheres Panafricanistas. Atualmente, a, a presidente da Organização Panafricana é a camarada Eunice de Pinche, que também atua como secretária-geral de SWAPO Mulheres da Namíbia. Grace Cabayo, da, da Uganda, atua como secretária-geral da, da Organização Pan-Africana de Mulheres. Ambos foram eleitos por unanimidade no décimo congresso realizado em Nabi. Metas e objetivos da Organização Pan-Africana de Mulheres. Um dos mais objetivos da formação da Organização Pan-Africana de Mulheres era mobilizar mulheres em países que ainda eram colonizadas para lutar contra sua libertação. Continuar a luta pelo reconhecimento e aplicação dos direitos das mulheres africanas, de participar na tomada de decisões no campo de vida política, econômica, cultural e social, tanto a nível nacional como internacional. E, em particular, de poder expressar a sua opinião nas leis relativas ao bem-estar de mulheres e crianças. Acompanhar o desenvolvimento e contribuir para a melhoria dos aspectos políticos e socioculturais sobre mulheres e crianças nos países membros e divulgar os resultados das pesquisas realizadas nesse campo pela Organização Pan-Africana de Mulheres ou pelos países membros por meio de documentos e meios de comunicação existentes. As ações tomadas em nível nacional e internacional com o objetivo de acabar com as graves violações dos direitos humanos e violações contra as, as mulheres. Apoiar todas as ações dos governos africanos, promover a unidade efetiva entre os Estados africanos por meio da amizade e cooperação para uma paz genuína. Estabelecer relações contínuas de amizade e cooperação entre mulheres africanas e mulheres em todo o mundo. Apoiar a cooperação interna e participar em todas as ações para a saúde, armamento e consolidação da paz na África e no mundo. Progredimos, mas ainda não atingimos todos os nossos objetivos. Nosso inimigo ainda trabalha contra nós. Nós também ainda trabalhamos contra os nossos inimigos. A organização é a chave. Precisamos mais de organizadores com consciência revolucionária para contribuir com nossa tarefa gigantesca. Quando a amiga Cabral prestou homenagem a Kwame Nkrumah, câncer de traição, ele disse, o presidente Nkrumah a quem homenageamos é principalmente o grande estrategista da luta contra o colonialismo clássico. Prestamos homenagem ao inimigo declarado do neocolonialismo na África e em outros lugares. No que diz respeito ao neocolonialismo, todos agora sabem que o livro de Nkrumah Neocolonialismo, a última etapa do imperialismo, 
é uma análise profunda e materialista da realidade, a terrível realidade em que se encontra o neocolonialismo em África. Conforme definido por Incurma, o primeiro presidente de um Ghana independente, o conceito do neocolonialismo nos alerta sobre o potencial impacto regressivo de formas não regulamentares de ajuda. Comércio e investimento estrangeiro direto em relação à redução da pobreza e bem-estar dos países africanos. Quando a Organização Pan-Africanista de Mulheres foi criada em 31 de julho de 1962, um dos seus objetivos era mobilizar as mulheres em países que ainda eram colonizados para, para lutar por sua libertação, apoiar ações tomadas em nível nacional e internacional, com o objetivo de acabar com as graves violações dos direitos humanos e violações contra as mulheres. Suas organizações de mulheres africanas, como a UDM do PGC, a ALMA do MPLA, a OIM do Frelimo, a URFG do PDGRDA, Mulheres de Suapo, e outros, aumentaram nossas contribuições para acabar com o neocolonismo clássico. Por volta desse mesmo período, o colonialismo clássico foi sendo substituído pelo neocolonialismo. A essência da exploração, opressão de gêneros e racismo ainda é mesmo. Em vez de, das bandeiras europeias serem erguidas em nossos países, em exércitos e administrações europeus, a mesma potência capitalistas e imperialistas europeias, tanto nações quanto cooperações. Continuem a dominar os países subjugados por meio das operações do capitalismo internacional e não por meio do governo direto. Eles manipulam governos neocolonialistas africanos fantoches. O trabalho dos africanos ainda é explorado, enquanto os capitalistas ainda se beneficiam dos frutos dos nossos trabalhos. Eles ficam mais ricos enquanto nós ficamos mais pobres. Como um Kurma mencionou, o neocolonialismo de hoje representa o imperialismo em que o seu estágio final e talvez o mais perigoso. No lugar do neocolonialismo como principal instrumento de imperialismo, temos hoje o neocolonialismo. A essência do neocolonialismo é que o Estado está sujeito a ele é em território independente de todas as armadilhas externas e soberania internacional. Na realidade, seu sistema econômico e, portanto, sua política são dirigidos de fora. Os métodos e a forma dessa direção podem assumir várias formas. Por exemplo, um caso extremo. As tropas do poder imperial podem implantar as suas bases no território do Estado neocolonial e controlar o seu governo. Mas, frequentemente, porém, o controle neocolonialista é exercido por meios econômicos ou monetários. Nossos inimigos utilizam os ne as ne neocolônias desculpem, para atacar os países libertários em transformações socialistas, como utilizam o Senegal para desestabilizar a Guiné-Bissau ou utilizando o Senegal e Costa de Marfim para atacar a Guiné-Conakry em novembro de 1970. Infelizmente, há muitos outros exemplos. Existem muitos exércitos estrangeiros baseados na África, vindos de França, Estados Unidos da América, Inglaterra, entre outros. Muitas das instituições financeiras internacionais prejudicam a nossa independência, incluindo os órgãos regionais. No caso da Guiné-Bissau, a CDA foi usada para apoiar golpes de Estado contra os governos liderados pelo PSGC. Quando, quando isso acontece, nós não sofremos, mas nós as mulheres e as meninas que sofrem mais. Somos explorados pelo neocolonialismo e pelo racismo, como os nossos homens, mas nós mulheres também somos explorados pela exploração de gênero. Não haverá libertação e unificação da África com o socialismo até que as mulheres africanas sejam libertadas. O desafio é organizar nossas mulheres que são tão exploradas, trabalhando de manhã cedo até a tarde da noite para vender nos mercados. 
vender peixe e trabalhar mais de receber menos em trabalhos de escritórios, ao mesmo tempo que cuidam dos nossos filhos. Isso deixa menos tempo para assistir às, às reuniões, estudar e se organizar na sociedade. Quando tínhamos estados parte, como o Partido Estado da, do PGC, o Partido Estado do CCP ou o PDGRDA, Partido Estado, as nossas organizações femininas puderam utilizar alguns dos recursos do Estado para o nosso trabalho organizacional. Agora, o domínio multipartidário, não recebemos nenhum apoio material dos Estados que ajudam a se tornar independentes. Conseguentemente, nossa organização mãe, a Organização Pan-Africana de Mulheres, recebe menos recursos do que antes. A maioria das organizações de mulheres não paga suas cotas porque não têm dinheiro suficiente para operar. Existem ainda milhões de mulheres africanas que não sabem a existência da Organização Panafricanista de Mulheres. Nosso desafio para o Dia da Mulher Panafricanista de 2021 é como transformar essa situação. Todos concordamos que precisamos de coordenar nossos esforços. Temos a estrutura. A Organização Panafricana de Mulheres já existe há 59 anos. Temos um presidente eleita democraticamente, a irmã e a camarada Eunice Lipinge, uma organizadora consciente e dedicada. Ela sozinha não pode carregar esta carga pesada. Nossos secretários regionais não podem cuidar disso sozinhos. O tema para o Dia da Mulher Panafricanista de 2021, mulheres e jovens africanos se organizando para o panafricanismo no século XXI, é relevante. Precisamos ajudar nossos jovens a se consciencializarem nas organizações que nossos mais velhos criaram. Eles precisam saber sobre a Organização Panafricanista de Mulheres e contribuir para ela. Se, ele, se eles não sabem, eles não podem contribuir. A Mirna Tablá nos insta, instruir. Quem sabe deve ensinar os que não sabem. Nossos jovens precisam conhecer a Federação Democrática Internacional das Mulheres. Infelizmente, muitos jovens sabem mais sobre novelas do que sobre nossas organizações. Juntos, por meio de uma organização de intercâmbio, podemos mudar isso. A luta continua. Viva a Dia das Mulheres Panafricanas, viva o DEMU, viva o PSGC, viva a União Revolucionária de todas as mulheres panafricanas, viva o Partido Revolucionário de todos os povos africanos, viva a Organização das Mulheres Panafricanas. Viva! 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 Viva a PIDC, viva! Viva! Viva, Jacques, viva! Viva! Viva, Amilcar Cabral, viva! Viva! Viva, Mama Tia Dora Gomes, viva! 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 African Revolution. Long live. Thank you so much. <laughs> Merci beaucoup, Sister Deborah Sores de Gama. We pay tribute to Mama Teodora Gomez, all the members of the PIGC, the African Party for the Independence of Guinea Bissau and Cape Verde. You keep the vision of our leader Amilcar Cabral alive. You are fighting for the unification of Africa from Guinea-Bissau. You are implementing the directive of Great Son of Africa, Kwame and the Handbook of Revolutionary Warfare to build the All-African Committee for Political Coordination. So we are so excited that our beloved sister Deborah Soles de Gama has given us a history of the work that's being done 
the sacrifice, the political education, and organization. So we thank you, Sister Deborah Soares de Gama, who is a leading cadre in the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde. She's an AAPRP cadre for the All African People's Revolutionary Party. She is part of the Women's Wing, the All African Women's Revolutionary Union, which is the Women's Wing of the All African People's Revolutionary Party. And she is also a militant of the Amilcar Cabral African Youth, Jacques. And these structures, these organizations are the vehicle that we daughters and sons of Africa need to organize for a unified socialist Africa. The theme, my brothers and sisters of Pan-African Women's Day 2021 is African women and youth organizing for Pan-Africanism in the 21st century. So we encourage you, if you haven't joined an organization in your life, join the All African People's Revolutionary Party, join the PIGC, join the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania, join Black Lives Matter movement, join any organization that is fighting for the liberation of our people, because it's only through organization and political education that we will achieve Pan-Africanism. My brothers and sisters, uh, we have an exciting panel and panelists who will speak to the theme. But before I introduce our panelists, because this amazing event is being organized by the All African Women's Revolutionary Union, I'm going to give you a brief history of the All African Women's Revolutionary Union, which is the women's wing of the All African People's Revolutionary Party. And in November of last year, we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the All African Women's Revolutionary Union. The All African Women's Revolutionary Union is the women's wing of the All African People's Revolutionary Party. It was founded in November, November 27, 1980. The All African Women's Revolutionary Union, like the All African Re People's Revolutionary Party, was born out of the political and ideological struggle for the liberation of all African and indigenous people over hundreds of years of colonialism, neocolonialism, and imperialism, where African women have always played a critical and decisive role. There is no doubt that the birth of the AAWRU was a logical and historical development and consequent consequence of the struggle of the masses of our people all over the world. As I said, the AAWRU was born in November 27, 1980, and the masses of women in the AAPRP declared themselves the All African Women's Revolutionary Union as the women's wing of the AAPRP. Our primary objective as the AAWRU is to develop our African women into conscious, effective, revolutionary, and crumous Therese cadre who participate fully in the growth, de development, and evolution of the AAPRP. Number two is to ensure that African women struggle jointly side by side with African men for the development and expansion of Pan-Africanism and against all forms of exploitation and oppression, including racism, capitalism, and sexism. And brothers and sisters, in order to wage that kind of ideological and political struggle, we must be an organization we must study our history and culture as African people. And we must respectfully struggle against the wrong ideas that we have been indoctrinated with through the imperialist capitalist system that miseducates our people every day 
24 hours, seven days a week, the mandate of imperialism is to miseducate and divide the people. We come to politically educate and unify the masses of African people, African women and men all over the world for one objective, Pan-Africanism, the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. The third objective of the All African Women's Revolutionary Union is to work jointly with revolutionary women and men worldwide through the AAPRP and the AAWRU towards the accomplishment of scientific socialism, incorporating certain revolutionary principles of egalitarianism and humanism. Now this Pan-African Women's Day program is a shining example of the outstanding work of the All-African Women's Revolutionary Union because we have our sister Deborah uh, who just spoke. She is a member of the African Party for the Independence of Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde in Guinea-Bissau. We have revolutionary relationships that we have built with the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania and their women's wing. We have relationships and work that we have done with formations in Sierra Leone, in Ghana, and other parts of Africa and the Caribbean. Because in order for our people to be free, we must build these revolutionary um, relationships through the principles of egalitarianism and humanism. I'm gonna conclude with the history of the AWRU by saying that our story is the journey of the perseverance of our people, of African people, through the determination and the outstanding courage, commitment, organizational capacity of the African woman. African women make up at least 53% of the African nation at home in Africa and worldwide. So we are the foundation of the African nation and we love our men and we work side by side with them in order to fight against capitalism. We don't fight among ourselves. We wage ideological struggle, but we work together to fight against the enemy of humanity with it, which is capitalism and imperialism. Capitalism which is, with its marginalization of women in the production process has successfully implemented a bourgeois philosophical base, which justifies the exploitation of African women in the workforce, in the education system, in agriculture, in every sphere of human existence. The capitalist system justifies the exploitation of African women. We come to counteract that. We are revolutionary African women, and we will continue to organize with our sisters in these various Pan-African organizations in Africa and outside of Africa until we achieve Pan-Africanism. I want to highlight um, some of the, uh, the work that we have done over the past 40 years. And one of the key themes of the AAWRU, which emerged in the first 20 years of our history was the call for the social revolution. The social revolution is about equality of African men and women. It's about changing um, our mindset towards each other to work together to bring about a unified socialist Africa, which allows for the African man and the African woman to work side by side to achieve that objective. I'm going to highlight some of the key um, revolutionary work and struggle that we've had over the past 40 years. We organized the first Pan-African Women's Conference in Europe for our 10th anniversary, which would have been 1990, in November of 1990. It was held in the historic Manchester, England, which is also the place of the fifth Pan-African Congress led by George Padmore, W.E.B. Dubois, and in that earlier clip, we saw his wife, Shirley Graham Dubois, delivering a powerful speech and a young Kwame Nkrumah. 
So we held our 20th anniversary union conference in Great Son of Africa, Amalcar Cabral's land, Guinea-Bissau in West Africa. That was in November 2000. We championed and supported the Million Man March, helping to organize with the Nation of Islam. And we spoke on the stage in Washington, D.C. with other world leaders. We participated, the All-African Women's Re Revolutionary Union participated in the 7th Pan-African Congress in 1994, held in Kampala, Uganda. We also led the campaign against the United States ban on travel to Libya in North Africa by organizing and leading several delegations to Libya in the mid and late 1980s. We have led delegations to Cuba, Venezuela, Azania, South Africa, Guinea, and Ghana. Our union has supported our people's struggle for self-determination by participating in agricultural projects in Guinea-Bissau and Ghana in the 1990s. We are aware that we stand today because of the legacy of those who came before us, such as our revolutionary presidents, Kwame Nkrumah, Seki Toure, our now departed ancestor cadres, Kwame Toure, David Brothers, our first union coordinator, Muwina Kiyati, and many others who have carried forward the struggle for Pan-Africanism. And many of our elders, like there's so many of them, uh, uh, Sister uh, Chavanduka, um, Sister Saridzai, uh, Mama, um, uh, Mama uh, Nehanda Green, um, Mzuri Pambeli. There's so many sisters in the AAWRU who have done amazing work. Um, Masani Biadiako, there's so many. And we pay homage to these sisters because they've trained us to carry the struggle forward. We are here today because of the vehicle for liberation that they have left behind, consistent revolutionary education and organization. So we say, Viva AWRU, Viva. Viva AAWRU, Viva. Long live the All African Women's Revolutionary Union. Long live Pan Africanism. Forward to one unified socialist Africa. So we'll now go on, brothers and sisters, to introduce our exciting panel of mighty daughters of Africa. We have four sisters who are doing outstanding work on behalf of the masses of our people. So what I'm going to do now is introduce our Pan-African Women's Day panelists. We will then um, arrange to ask specific questions of our panelists, and then we'll have a question and answer period. And of course, time is the master. So we have to be mindful of the time and ensure that all of the sisters on the panel have an opportunity to speak. So firstly, I'm going to introduce our sister, mighty daughter of Africa, sister Zakaria Kenny from the Amilcar Cabral Ideological School Movement in Nigeria, Nigeria. Sister Zakaria Kenny is the National Women's Coordinator of the Amilcar Cabral Ideological School Movement in Nigeria. She joined the struggle in 2015 at the age of 18 when she joined the ACISM. In her role as National Coordinator, she is in charge of all affairs related to women in the organization at both the local and the state branches, both the local and the state branches. Let's, let's give Sister Zakaria Kenny a warm revolutionary welcome. Sister Zakaria, are you here? Okay, and I'm going to introduce all the sisters first before we start the panel discussion. So we have okay, we have her here. 
Hello, everyone. Okay. Our second panelist is Sister from the Horn of Africa. Brothers and sisters, can you hear me? I want to make sure that you can hear me. Can, can you hear me? I want to make sure. Can someone just confirm? Okay, thank you. Okay, beautiful. So uh, we have Sister Zakaria Kenny. Um, thank you, Sister Zakaria Kenny for appearing there. Our second sister is Sister Yolian Obu from the Horn of Africa. Uh, she is a member of the Pan-African for Solidarity and Liberation Organization in Eritrea. Yolian is a 22-year-old Eritrean who is an organizing member of the Horn of Africa, Pan-Africans for Liberation and Solidarity Organization. She works with the organization to strengthen class consciousness amongst the Horn of Africa diaspora, and to unify on Pan-Africanism and anti-imperialism principles. She has engaged with Black Alliance for Peace in discussing the challenges in, in sorry, intergenerational Black radical movement building. Let's give Sister Yolian Ogbu a warm revolutionary Pan-African Women's Day greeting. Thank you, my sister, welcome. Our third panelist is Sister Adiambo Kasuku, Sister Adiambo Kasuku from the Revolutionary Socialist League in Kenya. Sister Ad Adiambo Kasuku is a socialist feminist based in Nairobi in Kenra, Ke Kenya, and she's a cadre with the Revolutionary Socialist League. So let's give Sister Adiambo Kasuku a warm Pan-African revolutionary greeting. Welcome, my sister. And finally, we have uh, Sister Ine Mesit Richardson from the All-African Women's Revolutionary Union in Burkina Faso. Uh, sister Ine Richardson, is an organizer with the All African People's Revolutionary Party and the All African Women's Revolutionary Union. She currently lives in Burkina Faso, where she's working on a Pan African library project and recording oral history of Burkina Faso's revolution led by Captain Thomas Sankara, one of our great sons of Africa. The objective of her work is to build bridges between Africa and the African diaspora, to promote popular and political education, and to work with others to achieve Pan-Africanism. So let's welcome Sister Inemesit Richardson to this exciting and historic Pan-African Women's Day panel. Thank you, my sisters. Now I'm looking at the screen and I need to see all of your beautiful faces. Please um, unmute and uh, I, I can see, there's one sister who I'm not seeing. Okay, Sister Adiambo is here, Sister Ina Mesit is here. Where is Sister Zacharia? There she is. Beautiful sisters, thank you so much. So without further ado, we are going to um, have our panel discussion. So what I'm going to do sisters and uh, attendees who are listening is I'm going to read out questions, but I will do them one at a time and each of you will have an opportunity to respond. Given the time limit on the program, you literally have about two minutes each. Uh, so the first question, which I'm going to start with uh, Sister Zakaria Kenny, is 
What does organizing to build Pan-Africanism look like in your area in 2021? What issues are of primary concern? And what resistance to those issues exist on the ground? So what does organizing to build Pan-Africanism look like in your area in 2021? What issues are of primary concerns? And what does resistance to those issues look like on the ground? Sister Zakaria Benny. Can you please unmute Sister Zakaria? Okay, um, it looks like she was disconnected. We'll come back to our sister and we'll move on to uh, Sister Yolian Ogbu. Sister Yolian, please answer that question. Okay, great, thank you. I'm so excited to be here and to, to listen to everyone. This is a beautiful program. Um, so I guess the answer that I have to this is specifically within our organization, HOA PALS, one of our primary objectives is to build consciousness within the diaspora and learn how to become better comrades for liberation struggles here and abroad. But specifically, obviously, we've identified these primary concerns being, as we would all have agreed, to neocolonialism, imperialism in all its forms, but specifically this extreme propaganda machine that continues to indoctrinate, um, especially like you, the youth as we continue to identify where we're at politically and what our politic is. It also limits our ability to unite through this black internationalist and pan-Africanist framework that we are all working towards. So the way I see it is that it's all about building consciousness that in turn will activate the political will of the masses. Cause I would say that we have, we have the mechanics that has been drawn out by folks that have written, I mean, the founders of this very organization have written out the mechanics to how we, we work through the struggle and um, work towards Pan-Africanism and achieve that. I think the problem is, is having that mass unified political will, right? So as we've heard before, this phrase that we are not outnumbered, but we're out-organized. So what is important about the organizing space that HOA PALS is creating is that in fact, we are in real time attempting to stay true to the principles of Pan-African unity. So we're working beyond the colonial borders within the region, recognizing these historical connections across the colonial nation states, recognizing the violence made by the leaders of, nation, of, 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 of Ethiopia at some point will in turn affect folks in Somalia, in Sudan, South Sudan, et cetera. And we're learning actively learning how to become dialectical materialists so that we face history as it is in all of its contradictions, not how as we uh, you know wanted it to be. I think the particular problem within um, the horn, but of course can be said to the entire region uh, to the entire continent and um, even in the diaspora is combating this active historical revisionism. We, we are working towards moving past this romanticization of the colonial history of certain nation states that have been um, that we have been taught to glamorize, uh, such as the colonial history of Ethiopia and the feudal monarchs, such as Haile Selassie, Menelik, Johannes, et cetera. So these are the, these are the biggest um, items and objectives that we have within our organization um, as we continue to maintain um, these principles of Pan-Africanism. But one of the other things that I have to this is also recognizing that young people are being consumed at the, you know, as if in the age of maybe 10, 11, 12, consumed by all of these types of industries and indoctrination that helps us to divert our attention to organization. So we learn how to become uh, social media youth activists and not how to actually learn how to become comrades, how to become dialectical materialists, how to understand struggle, how to be a part of it um, and, and work together. And so we can talk about that more, but those are some of the answers that I have to this question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Yolian. That was very empowering. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Sister Adiambo to answer that same question, please. Sister Adiambo. Sister Adiambo is a leading organizer with the Revolutionary Socialist League of Kenya. Right. Um, hi, comrades. 
Uh, so the question was, uh, what does Pan-African um, organization look like here? Uh, I am a member of the Revolutionary Socialist League in Kenya. We work with various uh, progressive uh, radical movements on the con across the continent and in the diaspora. Uh, we work closely with Nkrumah um, School in South Africa. We work with, uh, of course, the All African People Revolutionary Party. Shout out to AARP for putting this event together. So um, what does a Pan-Africanist Pan uh, organization look like here? Well, we are in correspondence with, with, a lot, with, with many comrades across the continent and in the diaspora, as I mentioned. We have various uh, study, st uh, study sessions uh, to study Pan-Africanism and you know, uh, um, study the evolution of Pan-Africanism and the future of Pan-Africanism. As my comrade Yolian has mentioned, uh, we are supposed to be dialectical materialists. So we don't romanticize anything. Uh, we, you know, we are scientific socialists. We look at things from a very objective perspective. Um, we analyze our current uh, material conditions and you know we, we talk a lot about what does it mean to be a pan-africanist and who is a pan-africanist i mean two years ago um when uh, robert mugabe passed away we had all this debate about um was he a pan-africanist and i mean just because you talk about a lot of black rhetoric and you know africa unites but you don't address class contradictions and uh, you know, uh, you keep rubbing shoulders with colonialists, and then turn around and say, "Yo, we are Pan-Africanism." When you, you know, you perhaps want to save yourself. Uh, I remember in 2015 in Nairobi, we had a so-called Pan-African um, Congress, uh, but we later found out that it was, um, you know, a neo-colonial uh, proxy event to save. Uh, I'm not going to say his name, but uh, he. <laughs> He's the president of a certain East African country that borders Somalia to save him from the International Criminal Court. So um, what Pan-African organizing looks like, looks like for here, uh, for us here is, you know, to be scientific socialists, to study our material conditions and to, you know, understand that Pan-Africanism Pan means bringing all Africans together under the banner of scientific socialism so that we can abash capitalism, so that we can get rid of imperialism, that we must, we must, we must address uh, class contradiction in Pan-Africanism organization. And that is done uh, through political education. So that is what we are doing um, here in RSL in Kenya as part of our Pan-Africanism organization. Thank you very much, uh, my sister Adiambo. That was very powerful. And there is a correlation between what you and sister Yolian are saying about uh, scientific socialism and addressing class contradictions. So we can see just by your two presentations how important political education is because you're both speaking the same revolutionary language. It's music to our ears. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll now move on to Sister Inem, sorry, Sister Inemesit Richardson. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Um, let me know if at any point you can't hear me or if my internet's not good, because that's kind of been happening. Um, I wrote down my responses, so I'll just read what I put. Um, I'll start by saying that this is my second time in Burkina Faso, but my first time living here. I've been here for about two and a half months now, and I'm still learning a lot every day. I was drawn to this country for two reasons. The first reason might be a little obvious. I'm here representing a revolutionary Pan-African socialist organization and Burkina Faso is renowned for a very rich revolutionary Pan-African socialist history under the leadership of Captain Thomas Sankara. But the other thing that drew me here is my awareness that the Sahel and Francophone West Africa has had a vibrant anti-imperialist movement over the past few years. I first became aware of this when I was a student in Senegal in 2018 when I connected with uh, the France Dégage or France Get Out movement, led by the organization Front Pour Une Révolution Anti-Imperialiste Populaire et Pan-Africaine, aka FRAP. This was a time when there were many protests, boycotts of French companies, popular graffiti art all over the city, and some people were also burning the CFA Franc, French-controlled currency during the demonstrations. 
During this time, I met with organizers and students from Senegal, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Mali, Chad, Central African Republic, and elsewhere. They shared similar stories of the absolute horror of French intervention, monetarily, economically, militarily, and politically. Prior to this, I had little idea that there was an entire system called La France Afrique, that France has intervened so extensively and so directly in its former colonies. When I was first invited to Burkina Faso, I was really excited to see what the movement looks like here in the land of upright men, or for the translation I prefer, the land of people of integrity. And I've not been disappointed. There is such a rich history of revolution that people draw from and are inspired by here due to both Sankara's legacy and the movement being waged all throughout this region right now. Unlike when I first came here and when I, when I was in Senegal, there's a little less talk and organizing around the CFA franc, French controlled currency, which I will talk about later on. Um, and more talk about what is happening in Mali, where the people have risen up to say that they refuse to continue living under French militarism. Um, I'm still learning a lot about this myself, but this is where the movement is at right now and what I've been exposed to the most so far. Of the former European colonial powers, France intervened the most visibly and directly on the continent, but no African country is even close to being liberated from imperialism right now, irrespective of whatever colonizer, and it is Pan-Africanism that will solve that. The All-African People's Revolutionary Party has helped me synthesize what I learned in Senegal and Burkina Faso with what I learned as an African living in the United States, as well as the conditions I witnessed African people living under in various parts of the world. The number one thing that I'm working to do here is to encourage those around me who are not in organizations to join organizations and to push people to understand the necess necessity of Pan-Africanism defined as the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. I'm working to open a Pan-African library here so people will have a place to come and access books by Kwame Nkrumah and Thomas Sankara and Asada Shakur and Malcolm X. Um, in the same vein, I also talk about how these borders were all artificially drawn. Since moving to Burkina Faso, I have learned that the Mose people who live here in Ouagadougou, it's the capital city where I'm in, um, are closely, um, or actually originate from, the, um, from Northern Ghana and are closely related to the people that live there. The Jola speaking people who live in Western Burkina Faso are closely related to the Bambara speaking people in Mali and the Pol, aka the Fulani people live in every single country in West Africa and the Sahel. These borders have absolutely no legitimacy. Part of France's neo-colonial arrangement when its colonies gained flag independence was a guarantee that these countries would remain separate rather than unifying into a single federal state, which was on the table at the time. The fact that this is what France does not want should tell us that this is exactly what we do want. So I'll stop here for now. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Sister Ina Messet. Again, it is um, music to our ears to hear you talk about the reality of French colonization and the outstanding work that our people are doing uh, and the attempt to build the library. Very inspiring. Thank you so much. So we now have uh, Sister uh, Zakaria Kenny from the Amakar Cabral Ideological School Movement, who will answer the question. And I just want to repeat that the theme of Pan-African Women's Day is African women and youth organizing for Pan-Africanism in the 21st century. Sister Zakaria Kenny is from the Amilcar Cabral Ideological School Movement in Nigeria. Is Sister Zakaria online now? I think there was a technical issue earlier. If she's not online, we'll come back to her and move on. Oh, she is here. Sister Zakaria, can you hear me? Oh, here she is. Can, can you hear me, my sister? Hello. 
Revolutionary greetings, my sister. Can I start now? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, before I started, I would like to define what Pan-Africanism is. Pan-Africanism is a worldwide movement that aims to encourage and strengthen the bond of solidarity within Africa. So the main goals of pan Pan-Africanism is it was created for it was Africa. So now, how does it look like to our ideological school movement in Nigeria? We organize people through training and political education. So we try to raise their consciousness. We introduce Marxism, um, the issue of our past leader through documentation, and we try to, and through a class struggle because we need to raise their consciousness so that they will see that what is happening in Nigeria is the same problem that is happening uh, in other uh, Africa, in other parts of Africa, but it's just a different problem, like we said, a uh, diversity of problem. So we have different way, um, so that a uh, different way we attend to the problem and different problem from a di uh, different dimension. So we have in Axism, we have our local chapter, we organize our meeting two eyes in a, mo in a month, in a month. So we have national um, lead, la national leadership. The national leaders we have our retreats where we organize people from different um, local chapters. We have 17 chapters in Nigeria presently out of 36 states. We have our branches at 17 states. So we try to organize our retreat through uh, its physical retreat. We try to, to monitor the challenges and the progress of the each chapters to accommodate ourselves, to share ideas and interest to talk about Nigeria at large. So we try to see because when we are in this organization, we need, because Nigeria, it has been a capitalist society. So it has been easy to organize the young people for uh, Pan-Africanism, but we need to, through, um, we need to raise their consciousness through training so that they will say that the reason for this that is happening, it is because of lack of unity among us. Because that what the capitalists want, what they really want is that they want to divide us. They want our youth to, they want to divide their minds to something material. So they believe they are not useful to the society. So we need to now bring them back. So let them see the need for them to come, to come and it is true socialist and pan-Africanism that we can bring these changes to the society. So we believe that we can achieve this through Pan-Africanism and through uh, socialist, um, social, uh, scientific social, social uh, uh, movement. So we always make, we always welcome every member, whether you're a working class, whether you're not a working class, because we all have common enemy and same uh, common interest. So we need people to know that we, there's no discrimination. Whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Christian, you are welcome to Azizia because we believe we are fighting one common enemy. So we don't discriminate. And um, we are talking of what, uh, what are the primary issues? Like I've said that it is not easy to organize Pan-African in Nigeria because it is very much influenced by the West and Nigeria is a capitalist state. So the youth believe more in material world. And this has been, and this, is, this, this will happen due to the unemployment that arises in the country. And majority of people, majority of people in Nigeria live below the standard of living. So it is not easy because they believe, okay, so that has not eaten. How do you want to tell people that come to this place? Let's go for the, let's go for struggle. So that hasn't eaten anything. You can't expect such person to come for that. I want to protest. So we need to let them say, okay, the reason why you haven't been given your rights, the reason why you haven't, it's because of the, it's because of the problem, our leader. It's because of them that all these things happen. So if you truly want your right, you want your freedom because no freedom comes for free. You have to fight. You have to do something to create the time for us. So we always try to expose our, lead, our, our, our members through theoretical aspects and practical aspects. And we, tr we try to test their mental state because in any revolution, in any struggle, you have to be mentally stable, Psychological, uh, okay, and um, physical fit. So we always, in that aspect, we always try to also uh, try to test our 
member uh, mental uh, state of mind, the emotional or my uh, emotional or mind and their physical fitness so that we're able to know okay these are the areas that we need to and i would like to say a still word before that it is our duty to fight each other and support each other we have nothing to lose our chain so we must fight our rights and it is our duty we must win we have nothing to we, we must love each other and support each other because we have nothing to lose but the same thing uh, we all african must lose. thank you for Revolutionary greetings, Sister Zacharia. That was so powerful. Um, thank you so much for your response to the question, which was what does organizing to build Pan Africanism look like in your area in 2021? What issues are of primary concern and what resistance to those issues exists on the ground? And we are so blessed today that we had a response from Mighty Daughters of Africa in Kenya, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, and Eritrea, a microcosm of Pan-Africanism, which is the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. So, Thank you, my sisters. We're going to move on to the second question. Um, we're looking at the time and we might have time to do a third question, but let's get through the second question. Now, the second question is, how do we build a global movement to win Pan-Africanism with sisters and youth at the forefront? How do we build a global movement to win Pan-Africanism with sisters and youth at the forefront. What transformations need to happen within the worldwide Pan-African movement and within revolutionary African organizations to achieve this? This is a very powerful and relevant question. So sisters, you've been doing a fantastic job. I would ask us to bear in mind that we have translators translating. So just pace yourself, you're all doing great. Thank you so much. So I'm going to call upon uh, Sister Yolian Obu to first answer uh, that question. Sister Yolian Obu is uh, from the Horn of Ar Africa in Eritrea. She is a leading organizer of the Horn of Africa, Pan-African, for Liberation and Solidarity Organization. My sister. Uh, thank you. So I would say that earlier, um, well, there's a lot of conversation that I even talked about kind of some of the recognizing the class struggle and class contradictions and having that analysis. Um, I guess my answer to this would be more internally. One, I think recognizing that we all have to cope with a lot of the disillusionment that we have been unfortunately like indoctrinated of like in order to stabilize ourselves and understand that like there is violence everywhere and the specific violence that happens within even organizations within groups within spaces that want to build pan-africanism that want to build and on these principles of unity um i think one of the things that i think about a lot when i think about the intercommunal violence is like recognizing that um you know, obviously things like poverty is violence, transphobia is violence. All of these different pieces continue to exist as um, we attempt to come together as, uh, as groups and um, engage together. And I think one of the biggest things that we need to do is actively combat the violence of, you know, patriarchy, but also gender as a colonial construct itself, recognizing one, that they are colonial constructs, that they are not things that are, um, that we continue to put ourselves in these boxes in order to um, adhere to Western standards of gender, of, what, of, of patriarchal, of the patriarchal structures that we are a part of. And I think that they have allowed us to, they have set us back um, so much and in, 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 in allowed for so much intercommunal violence to the point where we aren't able to um, actively, you know, come together and, and address the issues of imperialism, capitalism, because 
these are embedded in part of in part of capitalism, part of imperialism, gender in and of itself. Um, so I think these are some of the things that I, as we move towards uh, recognizing how to um, transform the Pan African movement, but also each and individual organization is saying that we first and foremost must recognize the intercommunal the violence that unfortunately is uh, as a seed from uh, colonialism and uh, so on and so forth. So that's kind of what I wanted to bring up as like a main point. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Yolian, for um, your contribution. And the issue of intercommunal violence is um, very relevant and strategies do need to be consistently revisited to counteract that. And one of the most important strategies is for us to continue to politically educate and organize the masses of our people so they can understand who the true enemy is. It's not the, uh, you know, the Muslim lady beside you or um, uh, the Igbo tribe or anything like that. It's the capitalist and imperialist system. So thank you so much for your contribution. Um, we'll now move on to our sister um, Adiambo Kasuku from the uh, Revolutionary Socialist League in Kenya to answer the question. Santi Sana, Comrade Tandiwe for the question. Uh, how do we bring women and youth into Pan-Africanism? And uh, you know, how do we uh, reimagine Pan-Africanism? Uh, so a lot of young women and a lot of a lot of young women, young men, and uh, non-binary uh, young people in Kenya have uh, this misconstrued uh, uh, vision of Pan-Africanism as just being, you know, bringing together uh, black people, uh, regardless of, you know, their politics or uh, class contradictions. And uh, African women have always been the vanguard uh, of revolutionary movements in Africa, even though their labor is erased, even though, um, you know, uh, what their contributions to the revolution are not documented. So uh, today we were having this discussion at the Pan-African Women's Day celebrations here in Nairobi that we must document every tiny thing we do for the revolution and that we must tell our stories as women for the future generations and to encourage younger women to come into the movement, to come into Pan-Africanism and tell them your efforts are recognized, that what you're doing is important for the movement. So we must document every, every little thing that young, that Pan-African women are doing, that young people are doing to remind them that you're doing a lot for the continent, you're doing a lot for our people all over the world. So documentation is important and giving women the voice, like women must be on the front line, women must be the vanguard uh, in the Pan-African movement. Women are revolutionary. So recognizing the labor of women and uh, recognizing the labor of young people is going to encourage them to come into revolutionary work and you know, to advance the agenda of Pan-African Africanism. We need to uh, reimagine Pan-Africanism not as something, um, uh, you know, uh, for the elite. Uh, let's be honest, uh, when <laughs> the, the founders of Pan-Africanism 120 years ago, uh, you know, um, Black people of a certain class, so uh, including the proletariat into Pan-Africanism and using accessible language uh, for the people so that Pan the Pan-Africanism Pan-Africanism doesn't look like a club of you know, elite people. Uh, that is going to bring more people into the revolutionary movement. And you know, um, we have to, um, you know, we have to uh, define what Pan-Africanism is. And it's not about having, you know, these dictators at the AU, these uh, sellout leaders at the AU are uh, trying to define what Pan-Africanism is for us. You know, uh, Pan-Africanism is uh, some, uh, 
something convenient for them only when they want to, you know, escape the ICC. And then all of a sudden they want all of us to rally behind them and, you know, uh, bash the ICC and stuff like that. So we have to realize that just because you say Africa must unite, what are we, you know, uniting against? Are we uniting, you know, uh, so that you can escape the ICC. So we have to redefine, uh, you know, Pan-Africanism for the 21st century. We have to, uh, you know, document all the great work that Pan-African women are doing, all the great work that the youth are doing. So we must have, you know, revolutionary women as the vanguard of Pan-Africanism because we understand that women are you know going to be the liberators of Africa? Women are going to be the liberators of the world. African women are going to be the liberators of the world because once you liberate Africa, you you you, you know you offer liberation for the entire world. Once we overturn capitalism in Africa, you know we are going to overturn capitalism in the belly of the beast in America and liberate the entire world. So you know just to wrap it up. Um, documenting what uh, young Pan-African women are doing is going to bring more women into the struggle and we have to redefine Pan-Africanism. We have to reimagine Pan-Africanism outside, you know, uh, having to save uh, certain people from the ICC or having, you know, uh, to uh, like, so we, yeah, we just have to reimagine Pan-Africanism, include the working people, make the language accessible. Yeah. Wow, that was powerful, my sister um, Adiambo. You said so much so eloquently about the need for us to tell our stories as African women, to document our rich, proud history, to be creative about redefining um, Pan-Africanism in the 21st century to uh, suit our conditions and to speak in the language of the masses. This is very, very important. Our people are so creative with our speech and we speak diversely. So we must speak in the language of the people, but keep the message consistent about the need for organization, the need for um, Pan-Africanism, which is the unification of our, our continent and so forth. So thank you so much, uh, Sister Adiambo for that powerful contribution to the question. I'm going to move on and I'm conscious of the time. Uh, so this might be the last question, which is, um, you know, that's okay. We'll be able to continue with question and answer to make sure that uh, everyone who's listening um, has an opportunity to try and pose a question. So I'm now going to call on our sister, Sister Inemesit Richardson, uh, who's an organizer for the All African People's Revolutionary Party. And she's in uh, Burkina Faso, the, the land of our great son of Africa, Thomas Sankara. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'll read what I wrote for this question and then a little bit of something I wrote more about the context of Burkina Faso's history. Um, so one thing I think about is how much easier it is for us to celebrate women in the struggle when they are under the leadership of men or taking direction from men that it is for us to take women seriously when they're coming up with the strategy or the theory that guides our struggles. Uh, we need to be able to listen to revolutionary women, Pan-African women, and to take seriously their contributions as thinkers, leaders, strategists, theorists, and members of the revolutionary intelligentsia. We should be reading more revolutionary women. We should be studying their historical contributions. Um, women get erased so quickly from history. And while I think that representation for representation's sake is meaningless, and that representation is dangerous when it's applied to liberal frameworks and institutions, I do think it can become meaningful within revolutionary spaces when it is tied to an effort to hand power over to oppressed people, including working class African women and marginalized genders. For example, it only hurts our ability to develop a larger movement and a greater Pan-African and greater Pan-African organizations if we remember Patrice Lumumba, but we forget Andre Buin, if we remember Amilcar Cabral, but we forget Titina Silla and Carmen Pereira, if we remember Fela Kuti, but we forget his revolutionary mother from Milayo and Nikulapu Kuti, I think if they were uplifted even half as much as their male counterparts, we would do a better job at recruiting more African women into the struggle. We are super adamant about political education within the Pan-African movement, and we want everyone to read Kwame Nkrumah and Emilcar Cabral and Walter Rodney, and absolutely, 
I 100% agree, everyone should read these people. This is really crucial. Um, but we are also at a point where it's very hard to even locate women's voices or contributions in this history and in the theory. Funmilayo and Nikolapu Kuti, for example, wrote a number of articles and gave numerous speeches, but I have no idea how to locate these as of now. Andre Bluin wrote a book and it's not in print. Again, I don't really care about representation just for the sake of representation. Um, so if a woman writes a book and the book doesn't push the movement forward, then we should absolutely put the book down and read Ahmed Sekoutoure instead. I just have a difficult time believing that in the history of the Pan-African movement, very, very, very few women have ever had meaningful contributions. I am certain that there's a wealth of valuable insight that does exist, but it's currently just not known about or available. Resurrecting this would have a big impact on not only how women see themselves and understand their potential to contribute to our revolutionary struggle, but it will also have an impact on how men understand the role of women. It would force people of all genders to be willing to take guidance at some points from the women themselves. It's not only on women to end patriarchy, it's also on men, so they should feel as concerned as we do. They should also notice and be upset about the gaps in our historical knowledge and pol political education when it appears that women are missing. And then I want to talk about Burkina Faso a little bit as well, because Burkina Faso has such an amazing history uh, with its uh, women's emancipation campaign during the socialist revolution in the 80s. Um, so I wrote about this as well, and I said, um, representation is only meaningful when it is tied to a liberatory ideology and a revolutionary socialist process. If we look at the example of Burkina Faso, we can see that during the 1983 to 1987 revolution, there was a large shift in the role that women played in various sectors of the government. To give a few examples, under President Thomas Sankara, Bernadette Sanudao was appointed the Minister of Culture, Patrice Damiba was appointed Minister of Health, Germaine Peretoipo was appointed High Commissioner of Karitenga Province, and then later served as a cultural diplomat. Um, so these are just a, a few examples of the women who we don't hear about as much. Um, this form of representation really did matter because it was tied to a widespread women's emancipation campaign that was designed to liberate working class African women and especially women who made up rural farmers and the peasantry and to work towards the elimination of patriarchy, neo-colonialism and capitalism. It was very different from the type of representation where women are invited to sit at the table to participate in or direct the oppression of other women, workers or peasants. On the other hand, um, part of me also wants to argue that the women's emancipation campaign in Burkina Faso was not about representation at all. Creating a state ruled by workers and peasants, many of whom are women, is very different from representing women or re colonized people within inherently colonial liberal institutions. When the point of the revolution is to bring workers and peasants to power to exercise control over the state, then I feel representation is not the right word and becomes almost a meaningless concept. What Burkina Faso was working to do between 1983 and 1987 was to transfer power to women and various other oppressed sectors of the society, not to merely represent them. That was my response. <laughs> I'm speechless. I am speechless by the level of revolutionary consciousness of these great daughters of Africa on the panel, the commonality of the themes. My sister, Ina Mesit Richardson, you were amazing. Um, you highlighted so many important things, especially about that period between 1983 in 1987 about the transfer of power to sisters. That's similar to what we in the AAWRU are talking about with the social revolution. So you see that Pan-Africanism is in motion and ideologically our sisters in Eritrea, Burkina Faso, Kenya, Nigeria and other parts of the, of the continent, we're in line ideologically, it's so exciting. Thank you so much, my sister. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to ask our sister, uh, Zakaria Kenny from the Amakar Cabral Ideological School Movement in Nigeria to answer the question. And then we're gonna move on to the question and answer period of Pan-African Women's Day. And I just want to repeat that the theme of Pan-African Women's Day is African women and youth organizing for Pan-Africanism in the 21st century. Sister Zakaria Kenny. Yeah, viva. Viva.
Long live uh, Viva. Um, I so, the thing is, ban Afghanism. Long live, long live. Now, we need to play to organize a global movement with, to win pan Afghanism with our sisters and youth. We need to place more emphasis on training of our cadres. We need the flag. Like, they can serve as a truth for socialist changes coming forward to also um, educate others and enlighten others. And also, we must note that to make it more easier for pan Africanism movement, we must involve the young children at so tender age so that they can be built on revolutionary movements and what pan Africanism is, so that they can easily confront any challenges any problem that comes to them at tender age and it will be easy to convince them on the movement of pan-africanism so the africa are the same lack of productive job women now they are only a tools for sexual satisfaction. So we need to train them at the tender age so that when anybody wants to come to harass them or to, they must, able, they must be strong enough to comfort any problem. Because now we can see that during, we can see that during the rape, uh, when uh, a, a child girl was raped, they will have that to, 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 um, they will have that to not open because of shame. That's how they, they believe that once they are raped, they are a, they are a, or shame to the society, you, you embarrass the family. But when we train the ch young children, we let them, despite being the rape is not their fault. It's, it is a very, uh, the, uh, the rape is that we are ashamed of such acts. So we need to train. Uh, warmest revolutionary greetings, brothers and sisters, and um, our mighty daughters on the panel. Uh, we're having some technical issues, uh, and unfortunately. Uh, oh, I'm back. Oh, she's back. Okay. I'm back. I'm sorry for these network issues, so I'm very sorry. So now we could now see that it is the same problem women are facing in everywhere in the part of the world. Now, it is now our duty to come forward to United. We are talking of unity. We are not talking of, and because unity, we are not talking of, and we are talking of coming against any girl, any, any, any challenge, against any women in the world. In the world, anywhere, whether you are black, whether we must come together because we all have common purpose. Because they they make it clear that they've already made it clear that we are nothing but the tools for social uh, for uh, sexual satisfaction that we belong to the kitchen. So we must make it, we must have to fight because when we remember the history of our past hero, Dandara, Winnie Mandela, Fumla Fumla Azokuti, Ivana Osma, those people they serve as an example for us to come forward to fight for our rights and to let them know that we are more stronger. The power of a woman. Is more better than thousands of a women of a men in the world. So we must let them know, and through this we can, and we must know that we must embrace Pan African and socialist society. We must build our young, we, young ones and women in Pan African society, which encourage equal rights and equal, equal rights and equality in the society. Thank you. Uh, many thanks, uh, Sister uh, Zachariah Kenny, for your contribution. You touched on 
so many important points with respect to our young children, teaching them at an early age and um, educating them about Pan-Africanism and other important points. So we thank you so much for your contribution and daughters and sons of Africa who are listening to the program, whether you're panelists or you're in the audience, all of this is part of the political education process. For all of us to raise our collective consciousness, we need to study our history. We need to study our culture. We need to join an organization that is fighting for the people. We need to have more Pan-African Women's Day commemorations so we raise our collective consciousness and commitment to the objective of Pan-Africanism. So thank you so much to our panelists. We're moving on to the question and answer period now. So we're gonna ask our panelists to remain where they are. Um, we do have a special treat uh, before we formally open up the Q&A. We're going to call on Mighty Daughter, great revolutionary leader, auntie, um, comrade of Amilcar Cabral, Mama, Teodora Gomez, who is a living legend in the Pan-African world, to uh, speak for a few minutes about um, her contribution. I had the privilege of meeting mighty daughter of Africa, uh, Mama Teodora Gomez in 2000, when I attended the 20th anniversary commemoration of the All African Women's Revolutionary Union in Guinea-Bissau. On behalf of the AAWRU, I was representing the organization with Mama Moina Kuyate, who is now one of our great ancestors, Nehanda Green, and there were members of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania and the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde hosted the meeting, but more importantly, their women's ring, UDIMU, the Democratic Union of Guinean Women. So Mama Teodora Gomez, to put in a nutshell, fought alongside Amilcar Cabral, um, one of the greatest sons of Africa during the anti-colonial Portuguese struggle. And she is a legend in Guinea-Bissau. She helped to co-found Udimu, the women's wing in the PIGC, and she's still fighting the fight for Pan-Africanism. So we're going to invite Mama Teodora Gomez to spread a message for about five minutes of revolutionary support and solidarity for Pan-African Women's Day. Mama Teodora Gomez. Mama Teodora Gomez. Uh, revolutionary greetings, comrade. Comrade Teodora was here, as you could see, but she had to leave. She has a funeral going on right now. She was here up to about five minutes ago. But she asked me to tell you all that she's together with us always, and she wants to uh, invite you all to come back again to the homeland of Milka Cabral, because you know that the PIDC, the AGRP are one and the same. The AAWRU and UDMU are one and the same. The pioneers of the PIDC, the pioneers of the AGRP are one and the same. So she says she gives you all of her love, everybody love and greetings, especially all the comrades who have the opportunity to come here before and to receive her when she's in a place like England, uh, different parts, Chicago, Atlanta, et cetera. So she's together with us. And uh, these, are, these are her ideological children with us. So we allow them to say hello to you. Viva! Viva Pan-Africanism! Viva! Viva Minas Pan-Africanista! Viva, Viva PITPI! Viva, Viva PIDC! Viva, Viva Minas Viva. Pan-Africanista! Viva! So we will, we will, as well as our other comrades, uh, Comrade uh, Nyama Mloni Nantama Nyasi, the Secretary General of Udimu, also is uh, sick. Even to this day, I talked to her a little while ago. She's very weak. She's undergoing through a bad case of malaria, which is going around right now. But she sends her revolutionary greetings to you all. You know, she's always been involved with all of the programs in APIP in Ghana, uh, with the different uh, uh, ideological seminars online. So she sends her revolutionary greetings. She even asked if we can send a recording. We'll send it to you later on. 
but she also sends her registered greetings on behalf of the, the Democratic Union of Guinea Women, UDIMO, as well as all of our comrades in the PIC. We're here in the house of Amir Kakabra right now. This is the PIC headquarters. <laughs> uh oh, I just. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. We're together. And we'll see y'all next year. We'll see between between next year, but next year we'll be together when you come to Guinea-Bissau for your Congress and for the uh, the Pan-Africanist Ideological Seminar and the meeting with the Revolutionary Party of Africa to tighten up our revolutionary ideological political coordination at the level where the Kwame Krum called that All African People's Committee for Political Coordination. So come on back to the homeland of America. Tendiwe, it's been too long since you were here. <laughs> they know what is calling for you. <laughs> Sorry, all you comrades, come on. We we love you, brother Imani. I have to tell you about my brother. My brother um, amazes me. He left the United Snakes of America. Was it 40 years ago? He's a brilliant lawyer. And he left his profession in the United States to go to Guinea-Bissau to organize for Pan-Africanism, to help build the PIGC. And he's been there ever since. He's an amazing cadre in the All African People's Revolutionary Party and has risked his life through coup d'etats in Guinea-Bissau and has been a faithful and mighty son of Africa. We love you, Brother Imani. Please give our love and revolutionary greetings to Mama Teodora Gomez, and um, we thank you for the invite, and I hope that people will, will act upon it. So thank you so much. Viva PIGC, viva. Viva Jacques, viva. Viva Udemu, viva. Long live Pan-Africanism. Long live Amilcar Cabral. Thank you so much. Okay. We're conscious of the time and we'll keep going. We have some questions for our distinguished panelists, our brilliant sisters who have done an outstanding job in helping to politically educate us about the theme of African women and youth organizing for Pan-Africanism in the 21st century. We have about 10 to 12 minutes for the question and answer period. I'm gonna read out some of the questions um, that have been put to the panelists. The first one says, revolutionary greetings, everyone. This is from Sister Tina Jones Savadogo. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Tina Jones Savadogo. Revolutionary greetings, everyone. Thus far, well-needed, excellent discussions. So much is happening in the diaspora that appears not to be inviting to our community. How can we, this is the question, how can we as distinguished women of Pan-Africanism assist in spreading the positivity of why it's important to embrace Pan-Africanism and Black unity to move our people forward? How can we as distinguished women of Pan-Africanism assist in spreading positivity of why it's important to embrace Pan-Africanism and Black unity to move our people forward? So I'm going to ask um, the panelists, I'm just gonna do one question per panelist. I'm gonna randomly just ask a panelist to answer that. I'm gonna start with uh, Sister Yolian, if she's still uh, present. Uh, Sister Yolian Ogbu, who is from Eritrea, Pan-Africanist for Solidarity and Liberation Organization. Is she there? Yeah, I'm here, yes. Okay, thank you, sister. Okay, yeah, so the question was talking about how we can embrace a lot of these principles. I think the biggest thing outside of joining an organization, which is clearly the big, you know, the big message here, is recognizing that individually, we we're constantly consumed by this like individualist um, ideals are surrounding us, especially, um, because of capitalism and its stronghold on the world and on the continent and in the diaspora. So I think breaking away from that is really important. How I kind of wanted to talk about some of the barriers that would, I guess the barriers to this like fundamental transformation from us looking from away 
uh, from the individual and moving towards um, more of the collective. I think we see that a lot in um, this human rights discourse that happens. And what we see is this individualist approach to this idea of like the right to um, an individual human having certain things, whether that is a civil or political right, et cetera. And this priorita prioritization of the civil and political rights over the social and economic is very interesting considering they're, at the end of the day, they're all in tandem with each other. And this is an intellectually dishonest account that intentionally divorces human rights from the concrete history, the role of imperialism, and from the masses of African people um, as active agents within our own lives and in our own history. So this approach to understanding the rights that we all have as a collective is, is really important because individuality is overemphasized at the expense of the collective. So I think how we face this is really rejecting this perception of of, of, of understanding each other as the individual, as myself and I, but rather embracing the collective because that in and of itself is rooted in a more liberatory, more revolutionary perspective, recognizing that our rights are not necessarily and should not necessarily be seen as a standard for charity, right? That like, that is a part of like this natural law, but rather as a means of struggle that we as a collective work towards, and then we then share in the, the, the fruits of it at, at the end of the day. So I think that's probably the biggest thing until we understand that um, we embra embracing Pan-Africanism means embracing uh, the collective, embracing ourselves as a group. And I think that is what is so natural to um, women who embrace Pan-Africanism in and of itself. We in, do the work together and we should, you know, bear the fruits of it together and not individually. So I think the, the, that's the biggest thing that I kind of wanted to mention to that. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sister Yolian, for bringing out in a nutshell what the essence of Pan-Africanism. It is um, an objective that benefits the collective of the masses of our people. It's about collective sharing of our resources, sharing our ideas, sharing our struggles. Um, which is the natural order of the universe, that the universe itself is a collective entity. So um, you have said something very powerful about um, embracing the collective. And that in itself is also diametrically opposed to capitalism and imperialism, which emphasizes individualism. So thank you so much for bringing out that very empowering point, which is one of the key lessons we can learn today. Thank you. So um, we have in our midst um, a sister who is going to deliver a solidarity statement. Um, Pan-African Women's Day is an opportunity for African women and men to be educated about our struggle for Pan-Africanism, but also to encourage you who are not in an organization to join an organization fighting for the liberation of our people. We encourage you to join the All African People's Revolutionary Party. But if you don't join our organization, join an organization that is fighting for the people. And so we have a solidarity statement from a sister who is a leading organizer from the National Union of Eritrean Women, uh, Sister Seble Sehaya. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's a beautiful name. Sister Seble Seheya of the National Union of Eritrean Women will now deliver a solidarity statement and show her revolutionary love for our people. Sister Seble Seheya, welcome to Pan-African Women's Day. Thank you very much, uh, Thandwie. Um, my name is Seble Sehaya. You're very close. Um, and I am uh, absolutely happy to be here. And I have to say, wow, you know, what a superb uh, list of panelists and presenters. You know, they're such powerful thinkers and so nice to see our young ladies uh, involved in the Pan-African movement and, and, you know, ensuring that it's sustainable and ongoing. Um, so greetings to all sisters and brothers. Um, it is a privilege for me to address this message of solidarity with the All African Women's Revolutionary Union in commemoration of the 59th Pan-African Women's Day. 
Thank you to all, um, to the All Africa Women's Revolutionary Union for providing this platform and its continuous and unfettered commitment to the advancement of Africa. The National Union of Eritrean Women is an Eritrean mass organization. It was established to bring about tangible change in the political, social, and economic lives of Eritrean women. It works to emancipate women from all forms of oppression, discrimination, by nurturing the self-confidence of women and to, to avoid uh, dependence. The National Union of Eritrean Women was founded in November 1979 in the course of Eritrea's armed struggle for independence as one of Eritrea, Eritrean People's Liberation Front's mass organizations. The National Union of Eritrean Women was anchored on the grand work of the popular struggle for independence and for women to contribute their part and thereby prove equality through indisput indisputable means of emancipation. During the struggle, Eritrean women through demonstrated heroism and perseverance and through the sacrifices they made, architected their notable history. It is certainty without the participation of women, Eritrea's armed struggle for independence would not have achieved a victorious independence. The National Union of Eritrean Women is now headquartered in Asmara, the capital city of Eritrea, with about 350,000 members. In addition from uh, Eritrea, the uh, National Union of Eritrean Women has its uh, footprints in other nations, in other African nations, as well as in North America, Europe, Australia, and um, the Middle East. Today, Eritrean women remain engaged as key players in Eritrea's nation building process. Empowerment of women continues to be a top national priority and the government and people of Eritrea remain committed to the development agenda grounded in social justice and gender uh, equity. Our mission is to guarantee the rights of women in political, economic, social, and cultural sectors and to ensure the strong participation and contribution of women in the building of a society where women and men, girls and boys of diverse backgrounds share equal duties and enjoy equal rights and opportunities in all aspects of life. As we commemorate the 59th Pan-African Women's Day, National Union of Eritrean Women stands in solidarity with the Pan-African Women's Organization and promise to advocate and work for the following. One, the development of women's confidence in themselves and respect for one another, and the raising of consciousness to ensure their rights and participation in the political and legal, legal systems. Two, the development, maintenance, enhancement of laws that protect women's rights, entitlement rights, and other civil laws. Three, ensuring equal access to education and employment opportunities equal pay for equal work and equal rights for skills development and training for promotion. Four, ensuring um, improved access to adequate healthcare, paid maternity leave and childcare services. Five, the, um, the eradication of harmful traditional practices that endanger women's health and well-being. Six, the reduction of oppression and poverty. Seven, the creation of a conscious, committed, and capable youth population. Seven, continuous engagement and partnership with like-minded organizations globally. And eight, women and children are the number one victims of poverty and conflict in our world. The National Union of Eritrean Women believes and advocates for development of nations and the consolidation of peace. The National Union of Eritrean uh, Women partners and friends We'll have a historic Zoom presentation uh, to provide more detailed information about our organization, its activities, accomplishments, opportunities, and what the future looks like and what strategies the future should have. Um, this Zoom, this historical moment is going to be, um, it's tentatively scheduled for August 22nd. However, once confirmed, uh, we will share and make the information available as soon as possible. And it, will it would be an honor to have everyone here participate. Um, to change the woman and to equip her with the necessary tools for advancement, I believe is to change the world. Women must continue to be educated, to grow and develop so that societal living conditions can fundamentally and sustainably improve under the central principle of so social justice. And so our journey continues in solidarity and in power. 
As I come to the close of my solidarity message, it must be stress, stressed that change comes through an organized effort. One hand cannot clap on its own. So we must organize, we must work together, we must consolidate our voices. Please join an organization and ensure to fight for the rights and freedoms of all. When closing speeches and presentations in uh, um, Eritrean here in the diaspora, Eritreans always do so with these two phrases. So please allow me to do the same. The first one in Tigrinya is Zikhrin Kibrin Nisuwa Atna, which means eternal glory to our martyrs. And then the second phrase is Awat Nahafash, which means power to the people. Power to the people. Thank you. Power to the people, my sister. Um, thank you so much, uh, Sister uh, Sable Sahia, who is the uh, Secretary of the National Union of Eritrean Women for that very empowering solidarity statement. We do look forward to receiving the uh, Zoom details for the forum in August, August 22nd. Uh, this is part of the effort to build uh, Pan-African unity between sister organizations such as the National Union of Eritrean Women and many different formations in Africa. My sister uh, highlighted very important points about the history of the struggle in Eritrea, which is an integral part of the struggle for Pan-Africanism throughout Africa. One of the panelists had previously talked about these artificial colonial borders that were imposed by the imperialists, particularly in 1884 during the Berlin Conference, when our motherland was literally carved up like an apple pie by the imperialists. So these borders in Africa are, are artificial. We are one people, um, one Pan-African nation, and we have one objective, which is Pan-Africanism, the total liberation and unification of our homeland, Africa, under scientific socialism. So thank you again, my sister, for the work that you're doing in Eritrea, which is uh, for the unification of Africa and is um, commendable in terms of your representation as a revolutionary African women, woman. Now, brothers and sisters, mighty daughters and sons of Africa, we are so excited about this amazing commemoration. Uh, time is upon us. We have one more um, question uh, that we're going to ask because of time. And then we're going to move uh, to close the program. We actually have a cultural uh, performance by our sister, Carrie J, and then we'll wrap up the program. So the question that um, Sister Betel uh, Tesfa Mariam is asking the panelists, in your role within the organization that you're a part of, what specifically brings you hope about the current state of Pan-Africanism and its future? Secondly, what do existing efforts to recruit more women within these movements and organizations look like? Wow, two uh, interconnected questions. So in your role within the organization you're a part of, what specifically brings you hope about the current state of Pan-Africanism and, and the future? And what do you do to recruit more women into your organizations? I am gonna allow um, Sister, um, Sister uh, Adiambo Kasuku to just say a response to that question for one minute, because we'd also like to hear from Sister Inamisit Richardson and our other panelists. Just literally a minute, I know it's a tight squeeze, but just a minute to quickly answer that question. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, comrades. Uh, so the question was, um, what, uh, say that again, uh, Sister Thandiwe. That's okay, I know it's, um, it's with respect to your role in, in your organization. What, what brings you hope about 
the current state of Pan-Africanism and the future of it? And also, what do you do to recruit more women into your organization? Right. I think the most encouraging thing um, in RSL, the Revolutionary Socialist League, and how we are uh, working towards Pan-Africanism is just the way the cadres in our, in our organization go out of their way uh, to reach out to people through social media. And um, we are constantly talking about Pan-African organization, even when we're just hanging out. It's very, you know, it's very wonderful to see that our young cadres and the women in the organization are very, you know, enthusiastic and very excited for Pan-Africanism, Pan Pan-African organization. And, um, you know, uh, how we reach out to more women to join the movement, how we reach out to young women to join the movement is that we have various cells across Nairobi where, you know, we encourage women to join political life because, uh, you know, the bourgeois political scene, the capitalist political scene in Kenya is very violent, violent towards women in the sense that, oh, you're a, you should be at home in the kitchen, you should be, you know, a, a humble wife and, uh, you know, as such reactionary things. But we tell women that they are revolutionaries and their place is in the revolution. And, you know, we, we use accessible language and we welcome everyone regardless of, you know, uh, their uh, sexual identities and stuff like that. So the, the Revolutionary Socialist League is open to all women and especially to working class women who have been really marginalized. And that is how, you know, we reach to the proletariat women. So I'm very excited, uh, you know, to organize uh, for Pan-African solidarity on the continent and in the diaspora. Many thanks, Sister Adiambu. That sounds very positive. So um, our listeners, our, our people from around the world, our panelists know that there are various organizations that they can join and that the future of Pan-Africanism is, is powerful and we all need to play a role in building that future. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we'll move on uh, to Sister Inimisit Richardson. Uh, my sister, you have one minute because of the time constraint to, to answer this, this question. Okay, um, I'll answer this quickly. So I have um, an answer in the context of the diaspora in terms of what has given me a lot of hope. So I joined the APRP about a year and a half ago. And so this is just based off of my personal observation, but it does seem like there's a whole like wave of youth that are joining um, right now. I think the movement against um, police violence and just like state violence in the United States has led to a lot of people becoming radicalized and looking for alternatives beyond just uh, what the United States has to offer. So I think there is a, an awakening happening in the diaspora where more and more young people are realizing that they're African people and they're identifying with the continent more and they're looking to organizations like the APRP and other Pan-African groups. So that gives me a lot of hope. And then on the continent, um, where I'm at, I mean, really there's a lot of anti-imperialist sentiment. I think, um, you know, it's on people in organizations to push people into organizations and to give people um, the tools through political education to understand what's happening. But it's like, I can go to bars and restaurants and salons and barbershops and people are talking about neo-colonialism and imperialism here because that's their day-to-day life. So I think it presents a really um, important and like major opportunity to get people organized and to get people to see what the big picture is and what the solution is. Um, so that gives me a lot of hope. Um, as for how to get more women involved, um, that's a struggle I'm having now here as well. And that's a confession. I'm really new to Burkina Faso. So um, like it's a major goal to start building more and more with the women here and to have more uh, women comrades and contacts, because it is true that a lot of the political events I've attended here so far have been um, like, like men have been disproportionately represented um, at them. So this is something that is kind of, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out myself, but I do think that drawing on the history of this country and the history of the women's emancipation campaign might be one way to solve that problem. Asante Sana, my sister, Inevisette Richardson, who is an organizer for the All African People's Revolutionary Party in Burkina Faso for uh, responding to that question. I just want to uh, remind uh, Mighty Daughters and Sons of Africa who are listening 
and viewing this program, that this program is being organized by the All African People's Revolutionary Party, but specifically by our women's wing, the All African Women's Revolutionary Union that was in November, November 27th, 1980. So uh, our women's union has been around for just over 40 years. The All African People's Revolutionary Party encourages you if you're not in an organization, to join an organization to fight uh, for the liberation of our people. We can no longer uh, sit on the sidelines and cry about uh, the challenges that we face as a people if that's what we're doing. That is unacceptable. We must get involved in the struggle. We must become politically educated. We must be organized. We must link with other progressive and revolutionary movements and organizations in Africa and in the diaspora to expedite, to speed up the goal or the objective of Pan-Africanism. Our people are suffering. And so we must be conscious and responsible African women and young people and join an organization. We encourage you to join the All African People's Revolutionary Party. We have chapters in uh, Africa, uh, in, in different parts of Africa, Guinea-Bissau, uh, Burkina Faso, Tanzania, other parts of Africa. We have after chapters in the United States. We have a chapter here in Canada where I live. We have a chapter in England. You can go to our website, www.aaprp-intl, I like um, independence, N like Nigeria, T like Tanzania, L like liberation, uh, dot org to find out information about the Pan-African Women's Day history and the AAPRP. There's no more excuses, brothers and sisters. You're either for the people by joining an organization as our great ancestor Kwame Ture says, or by your inaction, you're against the people. We are in a fight for the liberation and lives of our people. So uh, we encourage you to join an organization today. Um, thank you so much to all of our panelists. We're wrapping up uh, the panel presentations and question and answer period of this historic or historic Pan-African Women's Day. We want to thank on behalf of the All African Women's Revolutionary Union, our beloved sister Adiambo Kasuko from the Revolutionary Socialist League in Kenya. Thank you, my sister. Continue the struggle for liberation. Our sister Ina Meset Richardson, who is um, an organizer for the All African People's Revolutionary Party in Burkina Faso. We thank you so much for your revolutionary work that you're doing in organization. We thank our sister Zakaria Kenny from the Amakar Cabral Ideological School Movement in Nigeria for the outstanding work you're doing there. Please keep it up. We need all of our people to be an organization. And our beloved sister Yolian Ogru from the Horn of Africa, making beautiful music through revolution in the Horn of Africa, um, an organizer with the Pan Africanists for Solidarity and Liberation in Eritrea. Keep up the work. We're with you in spirit, revolutionary spirit, my sisters. So thank you so much. We thank the uh, brothers and sisters who submitted questions and answers. And we're now going to move on to um, a cultural presentation from Sister Carrie J, um, a revolutionary sister and cultural artist who is going to... Um, delight us with her edutainment. Carrie J is a proud Pan-African woman who loves influencing change through music, education, travel, and spoken word poetry. In 2019, she dropped her debut project, Carrie, which is K-A-R-I, as an independent music artist. Sister Carrie J is the youngest poet in history to be crowned the mahogany urban poetry series, Queen of the Mic. You go, girl. Carrie was the opening rising star artist for Afrochella 2019 in Ghana. Go on with your bad self. And since then, she has become a Ghana representative artist for California. Welcome this mighty daughter of Africa, Sister Carrie J. Thank you, Sister Carrie. 
Go on, my sister. Okay, peace and blessings, family. Revolutionary greetings from the Western Hemisphere, West Coast. I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana right now, but I am from California, proud California girl, but representing, you already know, the humble West Coast of Ghana. Uh, we give you so much love and praise and thanks to the wonderful organizers, all of the wonderful women who have been diligently, diligently organizing this wonderful day. I have enjoyed all of the speakers. I have enjoyed all of the presenters. Thank you so much um, for all that you have done. I appreciate you, the host and everyone. It's just so powerful. Thank you, really. Um, I have a few selections. I have 15 minutes. I don't want to rush. We already over time. It's a bit of an illusion. So we're just going to have a great time. And I hope everyone's able to take something from my presentation. We don't fear no enemy. No, we don't fear no evil. Cause this light that lives in me, it takes me to my people. It shed light and give me joy. And down inside when we can't see them. We don't fear no enemy, no, we don't fear no evil. Cause this light that lives in me, it takes me to my people. It inspires past my feet and makes me go down when I'm feeble. I wonder what the history books will say about us. I wonder what words I'll be able to muster when these books repaint a genocide as a cool day in history. I wonder if we'll be remembered as the activists or the slacktivists or as the bold or the bystander. I wonder what words will succeed these killings. We are reliving and creating history in the same demonstration. Angry and frustrated, naive when we march in peace. We hot like Sacramento in July, no lie. We hot on every head that is silent. Speak up and make moves if you not about it, then move it, looking for healing and music, looking to leaders for leadership and to the elders for wisdom, everyone get in place. The last thing we need is to be scared and weak. Listen when the enemy speak, he made his point. Don't mistake a pig for a friend when he oink. We were taught to fear death way before we knew the importance of unified life. So now we cry over loved ones who lay in caskets, who went and gave all of their lives. That's my first piece. <clears throat> Yeah. Now this song is called Do Your Thing. You have to do your thing. Look, it's a lesson that we learn. No matter where you day or where you stay, it's that respect you want. Hey, hey, just is like that lesson that we learn. No matter what you throw, a seed will grow and you'll get that in return. And if you know, feel what you don't know. Ask questions, say, come to your money, you won't start to your soul. Hey, hey, don't feel what you don't know. Ask questions, say, come to your money, you can pay for your soul. Everybody say, do your thing, baby girl, make you no know, watch nobody, nobody. Do your thing, baby girl, make you no know, watch nobody, nobody. Do your thing, baby girl, you ain't gotta watch nobody. Nobody do your thing, baby girl. You ain't gotta watch nobody. Nobody. Yo, let me tell you a little story about a girl who loves everybody and would give the whole world if she could. Prophetic speech, so she spoke to the hood every day, begging for more life when she prayed. Sack town, baby, so she move a little different. Motherland, magic, motivated for the mission. And she dope, ain't no real competition. When you know that you chose and broke, but never broken. You the cup that when it's over, floodgate open. You know this, son. Hey, and you know this song, uh, all my baby girls say, yeah, it's a lesson that we learn. No matter where you stay or where you stay, it's that respect you will earn. Hey, just these life lessons that we learn. No matter what you throw, a seed will grow and you'll get that in return. Yeah. Listen, everybody say, do your thing, baby girl, make you know what's nobody, nobody. Do your thing, baby girl, make you know watch nobody, nobody. Do your thing, baby girl, you ain't gotta watch nobody, nobody. Do your thing, baby girl, you ain't gotta watch nobody, nobody. Say, keep going, all oh, you feel the rhythm. It's yours, you know you feel the rhythm. Keep going, all oh, you feel the rhythm. It's yours, you know you feel the rhythm. Keep going, all oh, you feel the rhythm. It's 
it's yours, you know you feel the rhythm. Keep going, oh, you feel the rhythm. It's yours, you know you feel the rhythm. Listen, every scene that I am, I am my first. I belong to myself, so myself won't hurt. I'm in love on myself, and that love take work. In my eyes, I see dreams, we come first, yeah. High vibe, frequency, like Mother Earth. Don't tell them you sign before you show them your worth. Fly high in the sky, baby, free like a bird. Fly high in the sky, baby, free like a bird. Do your thing, baby girl, make you know us nobody. Nobody. Hey, I nobody. Say, hey, 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 say, do your thing, baby girl, make you gotta watch nobody. Nobody. Do your thing, baby girl, you ain't gotta watch nobody. Nobody. Hey. I hope you guys like that one. That's some more. Okay, thank y'all so much. This next song is called Diaspora Daughter. We are the wonderful chosen daughters of Africa. This song is called Diaspora Daughter. I hope y'all like it. All of my songs is on all streaming platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube. You can get it, you can get it. Okay. Hey. I'm a diaspora daughter. Walk like, talk like, move like water. Y'all gonna have to get this. Diaspora daughter, walk like talk like move like water. Chase stars right back to my mother. One man, one love, and I'm after. Hey, I'm a diaspora daughter, walk like talk like move like water. Chase stars right back to my mother. One man, one love, and I'm after. Hey, I'm a diaspora daughter, born from my mother, born like my father. Come in from Cali, cast straight to Ghana. Chilling in Nadia, call me Cubana, Bailanga, Chica, call me Hermana. Different locations with the same problems. We are the people, people go farther. When we together, then we go harder. I'm a diaspora daughter. I talk like move like water. Take stars right back to my mother. One man, one love, one after. Hey, I'm a diaspora daughter. Walk like talk like move like water. Take stars right back to my mother. One man, one love, one after. Hey, over there, put your hands up. You're surrounded over there, over here. Diaspora, you can find us over there, over there. Put your hands up. You're surrounded over there, over here. Diaspora, you can find. I'm a diaspora daughter, walk like talk like move like water. Chase stars right back to my mother. One land, one love, and I'm after. Hey, I'm a diaspora daughter, walk like talk like move like water. One land, one love, and I'm after. One land, one love, and I'm after. Hey. That was diaspora daughter, y'all. That's my third selection. Get me moving right along. <laughs> Woo! Oh my gosh. Here we go. What makes a man about it? What makes a man about it? The other day they had black people and white poor people and red poor people and Puerto Rican poor people and Latin American poor Rican people of uh, all poor people of all descent. They have the problems with the movement based on racism. We don't care what anybody's saying. We don't make yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We ain't got a war with each other. Go to war for each other. Pull up in the city and protecting one another. They know we gon' fight and unite. For sure, we ain't got a war with each other. Go to war for each other. Pull up on your city and protecting one another. They know we gon' fight and unite. For sure, listen. Who can knock us down right here? Walk with your talk when the cord right here. Just kids from the block, so we know no fear. Knew what we taught, so we know no fear. No, watching our legends die in front of us. They normalizing the violence, trying to silence us. Live life led to that third eye open up, and then we keep an energy in a spirit world. Who's the center in the room? Well, we are the gospel. Make friends, make friends. When they not popping, they low energy. We are revival. We know Judas. They Ain't no disciple. Kill me like the cops do. We the op to. I fall, but I never hit the ground. Will we stumble? Will we add odds? Then the play is a fumble. Struggle too long, so I hope to come. No, say pull up on your city and protecting one another. They know we gon' fight and unite. For sure, we ain't got a war with each other. Go to war for each other. Pull up on your city and protecting one another. They know we gon' fight and unite. For sure, we know how it feels to be targeted and black marketed. We come into the room startling, the heart opposite. Circles stay small so they can't politic. And my people still starve so we can't fumble it. We the hottest trending topics and we still broke. 
All we need is one another, yet we still funk. Ain't no trust in our steps, we seen devils before. They conquered our land, but can't conquer our soul. Our enemy is strapped with military attacks. Pigs kill kids, and we ain't firing back. War is a state that we ain't ready for. Cause we all run when the enemy train to go. Women and reason, don't be silent. War ain't a riot, it's a mindset. We ain't rising no higher, divided, y'all. Say, we ain't got a war with each other, go to war for each other. Pull up on your city and protecting one another, they know. Uh -huh. We gon' fight and unite, for sure. We ain't got a war with each other, go to war for each other. Pull up on your city and protecting all your brothers, they know. Uh -huh. We gon' fight and unite, for sure. Thank y'all so much, Pan African Women's Day. I'm a proud, I forgot to mention this, but I'm a proud P Tiger member of the All African People Revolutionary Party. So I just thank everybody for being on this call, everybody for making time to honor and appreciate the legacy of revolutionary women who got us to where we're supposed to be today. I'm standing on great shoulders, great back strong that God is still we're supposed to be and not taken out for granted or not lightly. And we are in such great fellowship with amazing women of all ages, all backgrounds, countries, boundaries can't hold us back. I thank y'all and I love every single one of the African people on this call. Thank you. My sister, Carrie J, that was phenomenal. Um, let's give her a warm revolutionary Pan-African Women's Day applause. That was so empowering. Thank you, my sister. Thank you so much. And you heard her mention that she's a pre-cadre in the All African People's Revolutionary Party. So she's got that revolutionary spirit. She's got that cultural talent. And I can see why Sister Carrie J is the youngest poet in the history to be crowned the Ma Mahogany Urban Poetry Series, Queen of the Mic. You go with your bad self. Thank you, sis. We love you. Love y'all too. Thanks for having me. Yes. So uh, Mighty Daughters and Sons of Africa, we're moving towards the conclusion of this historic Pan-African Women's Day commemoration. The theme of the program is African women and youth organizing for Pan-Africanism in the 21st century. Pan-Africanism is an objective. Pan-Africanism Pan is defined as the total liberation and unification of our beautiful homeland, Africa, under scientific socialism. That's what we're organizing for, whether our people are conscious of it or not, our people are organizing for Pan-Africanism in the 21st century, and we will achieve it. The question then becomes, what are you doing to help us in the struggle for Pan-Africanism? Are you in an organization? Are you being politically educated? If you're not in an organization that is fighting for the liberation of our people, join the All African People's Revolutionary Party. We have chapters in Canada, the United States, Africa, England, and we're constantly building. If you don't join our party, join another organization that is fighting for the liberation of our people. I have a message from one of our great um, sister warriors, sister comrade Eunice Ipinj. Now she's in Uganda, in East Africa. And she sends revolutionary greetings from the Pan-African Women's Organization, which is the founding organization for Pan-African Women's Day and the Swapo Women's Council. She couldn't be with us today physically, but she's here in spirit. She's in Uganda attending Pan-African Women's Day events. And she looks forward to working with the Pan-Africanist Women's Organization for the 60th anniversary. So that's our sister comrade, mighty daughter of Africa, Eunice Ipinj, sending revolutionary greetings to all of us. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you, my sister. On behalf of the All African People's Revolutionary Party, and in particular, 
the All African Women's Revolutionary Union, which is the women's wing of the AAPRP, which was founded in November, November 27, 1980. I, Sister Tandiwe Shimarenga, would like to thank each and every one of you for participating in this historic Pan African Women's Day comm commemoration. Uh, the theme, I'll repeat it one more, once more, is African women and youth organizing for Pan-Africanism in the 21st century. I would like to thank all of the sisters in the All African Women's Revolutionary Union who worked so hard to put this program together behind the scenes. We have our technical team who have been coordinating this Zoom meeting. I want to thank um, all of the organizers within the um, PIGC, the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde, uh, with Brother uh, Imani, Sister Teodora Gomez, our sister Deborah, who delivered a powerful keynote speech today. I want to thank um, all of the panelists, powerful young sisters, revolutionary warriors for Pan-Africanism, who uh, delivered such powerful presentations, who responded to questions today about the theme. I'm gonna say their names again. We had Sister Zakaria Kenny from the Amilcar Cabral Ideological School Movement in Nigeria. We had um, Sister uh, Yolian Ogbu, um, who is organizing in Eritrea as one of our, our panelists. Um, and we have uh, Sister Adiambo Kasuku from the Revolutionary Socialist League in Kenya. And we have Sister Ina Maset Richardson, who is a member of the All African People's Revolutionary Party um, organizing in Burkina Faso. So we thank all of our warrior sisters who um, participated in the panel. We encourage you to continue the work that you're doing on the ground to inspire other sisters and brothers to, to be involved in the struggle for liberation. We thank our beloved sister, Abina Disro, who is the high priestess of poetry in Washington for her cultural presentation earlier. Um, the great Pan-Africanist Ahmed Sekoture talks about culture as a revolutionary tool for the liberation of our people. So we must use the music, we must use our culture to politically educate, empower our people to achieve Pan-African liberation. I also want to specifically thank um, our keynote speaker, uh, Sister Dibora Sores de Gama, who is an AAPRP pre cadre and militant of the Amilcar Cabral African Youth, uh, serving on its secretariat in Guinea-Bissau, and a pre cadre of the PAIGC Amilcar Cabral Political Ideological Training School for delivering such a powerful solidarity statement earlier today. And for all the facilitators, Brother Imani, our brothers and sisters in the PIGC who helped to translate, all the translators who translated this powerful Pan-African Women's Day message into the different languages. We love you, we thank all of you. All of you are an important part of the African revolution. Um, I want to once again say, that it is very important, and you're gonna hear Sister Tandyway saying this all the time, join an organization that is working for the liberation of our people. There are many organizations. There's the Democratic Union of Guinean Women in the PIGC, which is the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde. There's the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania in South Africa. There's the Azanian People's Organization in South Africa. There are so many different, there's SWAPO, there is, um, um, there's revolutionary organizations all over the continent that you can join. And I promise you, when you join an organization working for your people, it will transform your consciousness. 
You'll be able to study. You'll be able to travel. You'll be able to meet other beautiful African people who are on the same journey as you. I have been organizing with the AAPRP for 32 years, and I love all my brothers, sisters in the AAPRP and the AWRU because they have contributed to not only my development, but me being a lawyer today is because of the nurturing that I got from the AAPRP and my family. So we are a family and all we need to do is come together in these organizations to solve the problems that we have. There's so many beautiful things about being in an organization. So please join an organization. Um, we can have the All African People's Revolutionary Party organizers come speak in your area or help you recruit. It's not something you have to do on your own. We have a cultural workers bureau that you can contact and we can reach out to you to tell you more about that. You can go to our website, AAPRP hyphen I N T L like I for independence, N for Nigeria, T for Tanzania and L for love.org. Go to our website. You can make contact with our party. You can follow us on social media. We're actively involved in the social media revolution. And we ask you to support our programming as the All African People's Revolutionary Party. I wanna thank all of the sisters again in the All African Women's Revolutionary Union. I wanna thank our great ancestors who have transitioned to the revolutionary spirit world who are still with us fighting for the liberation of our people. So on behalf of the All African Women's Revolutionary Union, the women's wing of the All African People's Revolutionary Party, we say that African women and youth organizing for Pan-Africanism in the 21st century is our collective priority. It is our collective responsibility. And as we do that, we will achieve our objective of Pan-Africanism. Long live the All African People's Revolutionary Party. Long Viva live PIGC. Viva Demu. Long live Viva. 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 Forward to one of the socialist Africa. Thank you so much. Victoria.